reaction stream. We've only done reactions pre-recorded, so we're going to do it live. We're going to talk about the Asbury Revival. We're going to talk about the new American Gospel movie. We're going to talk about Ellen Parr's video about Christians going to hell, which that's going to be interesting. And we're also going to be talking about what else? Oh, what, what YouTube is recommending our kids. Oh, this is juicy, you guys. I'm telling you. Oh, man, this is some scary stuff. This is some weird stuff going on. Okay, so... If you're in here, do us a huge favor, like the video. Let me put both of us on screen. There we go. We're both on screen. Oh, and I'm I'm off center now. <laughs> He'll fix it. We're go we're gonna fix it all as we go here. We're gonna fix it all as we go. We tried getting it all going, but you know what? It is part of the growing pains. Look at watch. We're gonna fix it. There we go. We're gonna go. Look at this. Look at this. While we're live, hey, with the pink. The I peach like the pink. Pink. You like it? She she yeah she got it. She well you ordered it. No, I I'm glad. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you made me wear it. I'm happy. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Grammys for literally a second. We, we are planning to do a segment on the Grammys. We're not going to talk about the Grammys. Why is that? Why do you think we're not? Because everybody about... else is. Yes. And everybody... it's old news. It's old news. Everyone's already talked about it. This Nobody is to be expected. The devil's a loser and a yeah. liar. He's going to make himself known at the Grammys, at the Super Bowl, at the halftime show. It gets kind of tiring to be like, oh, the devil's at it again. But yes, we will talk about some of the stuff, but not necessarily Grammy related. There's a lot of mixed things going on. What could we expect? Did we not expect the alphabet community to be dancing and dressing up like the devil? We pretty much did. So that's where that is. But we're not going to talk a lot about it. A couple ways you can help those by liking the broadcast. Let me just get that out of the way so we can talk. Number one, like the broadcast. Remember, this is new for us. Sitting here at this setting yeah. is uncomfortable for us. It's new. Uh, it's just different. Well, you're used to being like alone. Yeah. Now I have somebody with the me. The whole thing's uncomfortable. I have my beautiful <laughs> wife with me. Isn't she so beautiful, everybody? Yes, she is. Okay. Number one, like the broadcast. Number two, share the broadcast. If you're on Facebook, do us a huge favor. Share the broadcast. I don't know why some of you are still scared to share. Don't be scared to share. Share, share, share. I almost made a dad joke. Just share the broadcast. No. And then <laughs> I'm on. just so cheesy and nerdy now that I'm a dad. I've always been. I mean, let's be honest. And then lastly, you can find out you support us. We have four starving kids that we really appreciate your support. Uh, you know, this is not going to starving kids in Africa. It's going to starving kids at our home. They're not starving. They're watching right now. They're definitely not starving. If you're watching YouTube, we do not starve our kids. We love our kids so much and treat them so well. But yes, you could support us monthly, one time. All the links to give are down below. All that good stuff. Someone says it's cutting in and out. Just refresh. Refresh. It'll be good. It'll, it'll work, okay? Facebook's always giving us trouble. So just refresh. Facebook's always doing that. They don't like 2K, 4K, this resolution. They don't like any of this. They're just lame. Okay, a couple dates, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview Alyssa a little bit on something. But a couple dates to go over. Very exciting. Okay, so tonight is not a Revival Lifestyle podcast. It's a reaction. We're going to talk about a bunch of different topics. It's going to be a new format, a new type of stream. Very excited for it. We'll be clipping it up, putting it on YouTube, all that. We're trying to figure out what to do with the studio. I'm like, okay, now we have the studio. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not... somebody said that. Go, what did they say? Looks like you with a wig. <laughs> Someone said you look like me with a wig. Interesting. Thank you. Like we look alike. Oh. But I just have hair. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you guys. Um, very exciting. This is, <laughs> we're going to get through this. This is not a Revival Lifestyle podcast, but we actually didn't cancel the Revival Lifestyle podcast. If you're on Facebook, just come to YouTube. They don't cut out on YouTube. They don't cut us out. Only Facebook cuts us out. So... This is not Revival Lifestyle Podcast. This is reaction, new content, new stream. We're trying to figure out what we're going to do with the studio. And so this is part of that. Which, by the way, we had a comment on our last one. Like, why are you guys matching? That's so cheesy. Just go away. You mean people go away. He likes matching now. Yes. Well, I mean, really? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, not Revival Lifestyle Podcast. We do have a Revival Lifestyle Podcast this Friday. Do you want to know who's going to be on? Do you know? I do know. Okay. Wait, am I going to... It's very exciting. So we're having it on Friday know. night. We're moving the podcast from tonight to Friday night, and we're having and Greg Laurie okay, on. I, say, I don't want to spill the beans. Who's an absolute yeah. legend in the Christian world. Greg Laurie is going to be on talking about the Jesus Revolution movie. I'm going to be interviewing him. His team reached out to me and said he'd love to be on the podcast, which is super humbling. Like, it's very flattering. I'm like, you want to be on my podcast? That's awesome. So this Friday, 6 o'clock, I'll have Greg Laurie on, who, again, mm -hmm. is a legend in the Christian world. Harvest Church, and he's done big crusades for years, and he was part of the Jesus Revolution, the Jesus Movement. And there's a movie coming out we're going to talk about, which is crazy. We have all these movies coming out. That's going to be Friday the 17th. This Friday, you don't want to miss that. Sunday, I'll be at Life Song Four Services. Saturday, February 25th, Antioch, California. March 13th, we have the Come Out in Jesus Name movie. So we have a lot of good stuff coming. This Friday, we have the podcast. 
We have Sunday at Life Song this Sunday on my website, Saturday of the week after at Antioch, and then March 13th, our movie's coming out. We have a lot of stuff happening. With that being said, I'm excited to have my guest on, my wife on. Hopefully, she'll be on more. You guys need to treat her right in the comments, though, y'all. <laughs> I'm telling you, some of you left some really just weird comments. Like, what was one of the main comments that people were leaving? Um, that I don't have a voice. What else? Uh, that you <laughs> talk too reading, much. No. <laughs> you talk too much. Um, it's easy to have a good marriage when I just say yes to everything. <laughs> um, I don't stand up for myself. Oh, there was a bunch. <laughs> she just there was keeps a bunch. Going. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you this. Do what? you want to talk no, more? No, I don't want to talk more. I'm here to be here. So if I don't talk enough, it's just going to be like this. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be awkward. <laughs> It'll just be quiet. So if you want to talk, what would you do? You just, you could just talk over me? Obviously. Are you afraid to talk no, over me? No. You're not? No. You just smack me and just yeah. talk? Yeah. So at any point If tonight, I wanted to say anything, I would say it. At any point. You heard it there, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it there. So, Which is so funny because going back and watching it again, I feel like I interrupted you multiple times and said what I wanted to say. I feel like you did amazing. Yeah. You thanks. talked a lot. People, what's crazy is people that never watch my stream watch the whole thing. Yeah. Like I had people that I, are not believers writing me that I know that are old friends and be like, I watched the whole thing. I couldn't turn it off. And I'm like, you're not even yeah. a Christian. But they love the testimony. They love having her on. They love hearing this casual dialogue. And then a bunch of people were like, I just like you talking like a normal person. You're yeah. not screaming, repent at me, I think which like I do a lot. I a different side. Yeah. Like so hopefully the studio can be relaxed. We're sitting on couches. I literally have a Jamba juice. I mean, whenever I ever drink Jamba juice on stream, I have this little thing here where I could control the computer if I need to and put the thing on and blah, blah, blah. My little, my little wand thing. <laughs> Nico's laughing already. But yeah, people were just like, let her talk more. <laughs> they said, don't worry. He talks over all the demon slayers too. <laughs> Can we, should we talk about that too? I mean, we have time. We're going to react to a lot of stuff. We really do have a lot of good stuff to cover. We just got to get this done with so you guys aren't like... What was the comments that you read? Same thing. Like, let her talk. Why aren't you letting her talk? She needs to talk more. I'm like, she literally told me before the stream, I yeah. don't want to talk a lot. Please talk yeah. as much as you can. Well, like, this is your podcast. It's not like it's my which is thing. What which is why I think we should bring the context tonight. So tonight, I asked her to co-host with me. So... If it was not, if she wasn't here, it'd be just me staring at you guys, yeah. which is cool. But I was like, would you be a co-host? So she might not talk for five, 10 minutes sometimes, yeah. 20 minutes, or she might talk. She's just going to talk when she wants to talk. How yeah. crazy is that? If <laughs> I she do sees what a, I want. <laughs> yeah. She's going to do whatever she wants. If she sees a comment she wants to read, she's just going to read it. So that's where it's at. Again, save your comments of, oh, you need to let your wife talk more. She's too submissive. Like imagine being a biblical wife and being submissive. Like the Bible says, I mean, crazy, but no. Um, I love her dearly. I, oh, I, uh, <laughs> I don't ever want to not have her talk, but if, if I don't talk, she doesn't have anything to say, then I'm just going to keep talking. And usually the way interviewing works is when you ask someone a question and they're done talking, you start talking again. Yeah. Some of you maybe don't know that even with the demons are podcast. So I'm not trying to put none of the guys on blast. Cause I know some of them watch, but I was like, guys, the more you talk, the less I have to talk. If I yeah. ask like the demons are podcast, a question to everybody and nobody says anything. And I think you're really good at feeling like blank you know what i mean like when it gets quiet and stuff you're really good at just i always have a you lot always to say. have a lot to say yeah well i mean i do this for a living i've been doing this for a lot of years so i yeah. always have stuff to say so that's kind of like if they don't say anything then i'm the host pretty much yeah. like i i gotta say something if, if someone asks a question and no one has an answer or wants to talk i'm gonna be like pick me yeah. teacher and just <laughs> talk so yeah i know everyone says like you don't talk you talk too much the other guys don't have a chance we're all grown adults here y'all we're not in school we're not in fifth grade we can talk when we want. Oh, to they talk. also said that you um, were making fun of me. Oh yeah, that was another like, thing. Like stop teasing They're her. They're like, don't tease her. But you love when I tease you. Well, yeah, and I, and I don't even think it's really like teasy. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But it wasn't. It, it was fun. It was like it's I like, feel like flirting. You get way more compliments than even teasing. So it's not. Wait, say that again. Well, yeah, you took it. You, the whole stream. You were like giving compliments and. Man, that's so nice of you to say in front of <laughs> two thousand people. So look, guys, we're in love. It's just haters. If you're not. Don't get mad at us, okay? Maybe you don't tease your wife or maybe your wife's like, doesn't like being teased. My wife, we like talking to each other like this. So it's all good. All the comments tonight are positive. I'm just letting you know if you're gonna leave a bunch of like weird, weird comments, we're probably gonna delete them. So we have a very busy schedule. Uh, I wanna talk about those comments. I want to make sure everybody knows publicly Alyssa has the freedom to talk <laughs> and say whatever she wants to say and do whatever she wants to do. Uh, there's no, oh, I'm the only one that has to talk and stuff, but we're going to be moving this through. We have a lot of stuff to react to, a lot of stuff to talk about. 
The first thing, the first segment that we're going to talk about tonight is what is YouTube teaching our kids? What is YouTube recommending our kids? Nothing and, good. and not only that, more importantly, what is the world teaching our kids? Because as Christian parents, there's one side that says we shouldn't shelter our kids, which I'll, I'll love to hear your opinion on this. Don't shelter your kids. Don't If we, if we shelter them, they're going to go crazy out in the world, which yeah. I think is total lie from the enemy. And the other side is like, uh, shelter your kids. Make sure you know what they're watching, what they're doing. The world's mm -hmm. evil. Be a covering for them. In my opinion wouldn't isn't a shelter a good thing like a shelter yeah. is literally protection during a storm yeah. and the world is pouring out on our kids with the alphabet community and and let me make this clear too because we're gonna talk about what youtube recommends kids when i say the alphabet community i have to say that because i get banned if i say the other word and when i say like transformers people are like why do you call them transformers like i literally can't say the other the other word that starts with trans whatever mm -hmm. because youtube takes down our video so don't get mad at me but th these communities and the world, not just these communities, really are like over, like overwhelmingly after our kids. Yeah. In my mind, it's like, okay, go after the teenagers, do what you want to do on TV, but it's always children, 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 children's YouTube, what they're doing here, what they're doing there. I really do believe that if we don't disciple our kids, YouTube will. Yeah. YouTube would love to disciple your kids. Their iPads would love to disciple them, their cell phones. And some of these kids out here are like five walking around with cell phones. I don't understand that, but that's a whole nother topic. But I really believe the church believers, Christians, not even the church, we have to disciple our kids. We have to make sure yeah. we're the ones teaching them what's right, what's wrong, because the world's looking to, the devil's looking to. Someone said, if we don't teach our children to follow Christ, the world will teach them not to. We also have to teach them how to navigate too. Yeah. Like how we teach our kids if, you know, if something about Halloween comes on or something, you know, how they have to just turn it off. Yeah. Witchcraft, so like they're still magic. being raised in this world and they still have to learn how to go like about it and how to turn it off and what's good and what's bad. Yeah. And talking with your kids, making them aware of what's happening yeah. in the world, making them aware of what the enemy's doing. Cause the enemy is out here. I mean, coming in like a flood, we're going to give you guys after this video, a couple steps, like very basic steps of how you could be involved with your kids, things you can do with what we're talking about. So it's not just do this or do that, but, um, some areas that we want to touch on for sure about raising kids in God. And yeah. we're, Let's just be honest. We're going to be the first ones to it. say we are not experts at all. We are not saying we have yeah. it all together. We we have we are so far from where we want to be. We always say like we got to do better. We're trying to get to that level. We want to. We're not where we want to be. No, raising. we're always are like wanting to do more and like oh we need to be better parents. Oh we need to do more with the kids. Oh we need to teach them more about yep. God. It's never like wow we're doing so great. We're always. Yeah, so we're not Always saying like you ourselves. guys, look at what you guys are doing, look what we're doing. But no. I wanted to talk about this YouTube, what is YouTube recommending kids? Because there's a lot of kids that watch, a lot of parents that let their kids watch kids YouTube. And we did for a while, or a short while, we noticed our kids were acting dramatically different. Yeah. And we were like, no YouTube, you're not watching YouTube because there's some crazy stuff on there. So I saw this guy posted a video, one of the first videos YouTube recommends kids. And we're going to watch that video in a minute. And I thought... There's no way this is real. There's no way this video we're about to react to, we're going to pause it. If you don't know what reaction is, you're going to learn tonight. We're going to pause <laughs> it and talk in between. There's no way this video is recommended to the kids. This guy, it has to be clickbait. So I didn't, I didn't believe it. I saw his video. And then I made a YouTube account and said, I'm nine-year-old little Johnny, and I want to make a YouTube account. And what is YouTube going to recommend me? And sure enough, literally, when you make an account for, I think, eight to 12 years old is what I made it for. This is the first video. There's like nine videos that pop up. This is the first one that YouTube recommends your kids when they make a, a kid's account. Like, and you're about to see on this video, this is like the epitome of confusion of what the, the devil's agenda is, what these communities want to do to our kids. And this is not some like Christian conservative conspiracy. This is literally what's happening in the world right now. And so... We're gonna watch this together. It is hard to watch because it is bizarre. We'll pause it when we want to pause it. Actually, I should have got you a little remote too, so you can pause it when you want to pause it. But if you want to pause it, out. yeah, just, just say you know. something. <laughs> yeah, just say something and I'll pause it. All right, we're gonna watch this together. Hopefully, it all syncs up on screen for you guys. Let's get on here. We'll be able to go to the reaction, and we're gonna to react to this. This is kids me a gender nonconforming person. This is the first video that YouTube is recommending to your kids. Kids meet a gender non-conforming, so I guess they say like binary or blue, I, I don't know, but let's, let's watch this here. So we're going to play it and then we'll pause it and we'll talk in between here. If a parent offers the option, you can play with this doll 
or you can play with this ball. And the boy chooses the ball. My theory is because early humans, like the men, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, hunted. I mean, is, is there a reason why the men were? So the men hunted. So the kid says, uh, you know, men were hunters. And I want to just note, like, seconds in, the person that's supposed to be, like, the gender nonconforming person that's going to teach this kid a lesson or two, which the kids are about to teach this person, are, like, questioning, asking questions to the kids, confusing the kids, making them question what they believe or why they've been raised that way. And honestly, some of this is just disturbing, and it falls on the parents. The parents should be the ones teaching. The parents should be the ones telling their kids, this is right, this is wrong. And the fact that parents are letting their kids sit with gender non-conforming people to talk about this stuff is just crazy, but yeah. Let's... Were the ones hunting? Probably because they were stronger. He, he said, is there a reason? Hi, Or I'm the Nanta. person said, is there a reason why Hi, they are hunt men are hunting? And the boy said, probably because they're stronger. It's such a simple answer. Hello. It's like, Hello. 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 nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Brianna. Hey, Brianna, I'm Nanta. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Yeah. Okay, so can I start asking questions? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you said think of some questions and be prepared. I'm prepared. Do you know why we're here today? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really, okay. That, that sums up the whole video. Not really. Why are we here? Why are, why are you guys showing me this? Why are we talking? And the kid goes, not really. Because kids don't know. Like when it comes to all this gender stuff and this whole alphabet community agenda, like kids have no clue. They don't walk around born going like, I don't know what gender I am. If I'm binary or non-binary or gender fluid or if I identify as you know a bag of Doritos or identify as, I don't know. I mean, kids don't know. Kids are literally innocent. They come out going, I'm either a boy or I'm a girl. It's super simple. And the world's the one that comes and perverts and distorts and changes things. So crazy. This play is not working. Let's I think it has something to do with like gender non-binary or non-conforming. Yeah, yeah, both. Yeah, so gender non-conforming and non-binary. What's gender non-conforming? Well, what do you think it is? Something about like, I gender, because I hear the word gender in it. Do I look like a girl to you? Yes. Well, what if I told you that sometimes, though, I feel more like a boy? That's OK. So binary, um, boy and a girl. So non-binary, meaning and the opposite. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a bunch of crock, right? You can be one end, the other end, or anywhere in between. That's interesting. But confusing. So let's let's. Thank you, thank you. That's he goes. Confusing. That's confusing. And then this person, which I I literally don't know what they are because I'm as confused as they are about it, has like naked mermaids on their shirt with like censored I, out on the chest. I know it's hard to I see. I can't see that. Can you see? No. Okay, you'll see when it zooms in. There's like naked mermaids. Like, why are you wearing a naked mermaid, mermaid shirt with a kid's? Like, you're going to inter to talk with kids. Like, you got ready. The producer yeah. said, hey, you're going to be talking to kids, trying to teach them about gender non-conforming or gender whatever it's called. And then you're like, oh, let me wear a shirt with naked mermaids. I'm like, is that Le a Leviathan? Is that like sponsored by Leviathan? <laughs> like, seriously, is that like sponsored by Leviathan? Because you have like this mermaid that's naked, this open mouth. I don't know. You'll see the censored over the... Crazy, crazy. Let's really start get, getting into some questions. Do you wish you were raised not as a girl, but just an anti? Yes, totally. It would have, have been great to just be marked like X gender, you know, not boy, not girl. Coming into my own skin later in life would have been a lot more easier. Did you always know you're a girl? Or? Yeah. Okay. Okay, did you always know you're a girl? Let's listen to her answer. By the way, I haven't watched this full video, but if you're just jumping in, this is what YouTube recommends your kids when they make a kid's account. This is the first video. I'm not lying, I made an account to check. This is the first video YouTube recommends your kids when they make a YouTube kids account. So let's see what this girl, it's like, did you always know you're a girl? And let's He's see what like, this yeah. precious, yeah, let's see what this precious little girl has to say. Has that ever changed says, yeah. or for you or? No. No. How did you know you were a girl? I feel it in my body. <laughs> yeah. I'm a boy. Not a girl. <laughs> but people think he's a girl. Oh, so, so people think you're a girl. I've been called a girl, I think, 309 times now. So that is a little boy, and obviously he has long hair, so people are yeah. like, he's a girl. I mean, I But he my, doesn't like when they call him a girl. Yeah, he doesn't like that. I would, I would get a haircut if my kid was like, I'm getting called a girl all the time. I mean, he doesn't mind it, obviously, but still, it's kind of like, these are... These are like the job of the parents to be like, hey, everyone's calling you a girl. Maybe we should cut your hair. 
But again, I thought he was a boy. I mean, he looks like a boy to me. But yeah. Now, and I like my hair. Just how it is. <laughs> what makes a boy a boy? An X and a Y chromosome. Oh. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> what makes a boy an X? How does how is he taking us to school here? This, this is such a perfect video because it literally shows how innocent kids are and how mm -hmm. simple it is. Because there's like 50 genders now, everyone's confused, but like the kids make it so simple and he just gave us the map. So on. like, is there anything to name? He gave us the signs um, on it. Like, like on the outside of somebody <laughs> that makes them a boy? Like, uh, genitalia. What? Yeah. No, no, that, that's also know. genetics, but like. Well, yeah, but like that's on the outside, I'm just saying. Are we talking yeah. about like, like, Looking or Emotions. like emotional or like hormonal or like genetical? Genetic like feelings. Genetical. Like I, I, I don't know where we're going. Like, yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard about like how people try to say like pink is a girl thing and then like how b blue is like a boy color? Yeah, I hear about that. Even though blue is one of my favorite colors. Yeah, right. So you see how confusing that could be? See, so she's saying like. Oh, you know, because mm -hmm. of color, some girls like blue. So maybe, maybe she's trying to like persuade her. She's trying to persuade them to be like, yeah, it's confusing, right? Yeah. When it's like the kids are like, no, it's not confusing. Like yeah. genitals and like chromosomes, it's it's not confusing. Uh, why why have we made it so confusing? There's God literally makes two. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't he didn't make like ninety or fifty or sixty. He makes two, and then we're like, no, there's like actually like thirty. It's just like so crazy. I feel like when yeah. it's like, I want to do this and that. If a parent offers the option with no bias, hey, you can play with this doll or you can play with this ball and the boy chooses the ball, my theory is because early humans, like the men, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, hunted. And so it's sort of like genetically men prefer things that move around. I, I know that's like completely a theory in terms of. I mean, is, is there a reason why the men were the ones hunting? Probably because they were stronger. And I Thank you. He's taking us to school. She's like, oh, I, I think like that's where answers. I kind of like, oh, really? Well, I'm strong. Why can't I be a hunter too? Well, yeah, but like, in sounds like Jezebel. I was gonna say she sounds bitter. Why can't We're I do all here. the stuff the guys do? But again, those naked mermaids confuse me. Why are you wearing a naked mermaid? Do you see that now? Yeah. Yeah. With, now I see it. With the little things. Yeah. Now that I zoomed. In. That's so crazy to me. She's, well, I think it's a she. She's like, yeah, why is In terms of like muscle mass, men have like, and I mean, they probably weren't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Does your family ever get mad at, at you for what you want to identify? Oh yeah. Um, I think it's different now that I'm an adult, but growing up, my mom would force me to wear a dress that I don't really want to wear. I don't really like wearing dresses as, or skirts too, so I feel really uncomfortable so when I'm cute. like wearing the skirt. So yeah, but did you get to choose your outfit today? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know exactly how I feel then. Yeah. Oh. How do you know if somebody's gender non-conforming? Is it okay to ask somebody what their gender is? So it's a lot better to ask about the person's pronouns. That would be like um, he or she um, or they. I'm so confused. Right. Versus if I said, what's your gender? <laughs> yeah, what's your gender? Are, are you a boy or are you a girl? Seems like you're very interested. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So have you ever been confused by using they, them as a pronoun for someone? I mean, sometimes it can be confusing, but it's I'm also, confused. I also have to remember that that's the pronouns that they've chosen and I need to respect that. Oh, I've noticed yeah. uh, someone in my class, first period, has um, the pronouns that they would like on their backpack. Oh, really? Oh, mm -hmm. that's cool. I've been to the Philippines. Oh, I like the Philippines. Oh, you've been there too? Yeah. Oh, that's where my family's from. And Where my mom's from. Okay. They use the term sha. So sha is like all encompassing of every gender. You know? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's um, a girl who works at my tutoring center and she goes by they, them. And then a lot of times, oh, like I just didn't call she. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Imagine being, how crazy is this? kids. What do you think about this? Are you Those getting emotional? Kids. Well, I just feel bad for them. It's so crazy. 
Like imagine living in a they're world. They're like so set in their thing. And then she's like trying to confuse them. And they're like, well, they're trying to be nice to everybody. We literally live in this so world where them. kids are, don't even know what to call yeah. people. And anything you say is wrong. And then we're supposed yeah. to keep track of like, are they, they, them, is it a he, well, she's she, just saying, or She's him, like, her? yeah, my tutoring girl, I called her a she. And then, you know, I felt bad. So it's like, they just felt bad. What a weird world. Again, this is what YouTube recommends your kids. They want your kids to watch this video. Yeah. And they, they frame this video in such a way where it's like, oh, it's innocent. But then the whole time, she is basically wanting to get them to be like, do yeah. you see the gray area? To change them. Do you see the gray area? Do you see where... Like, you guys are wrong by not treating us the way we want to be treated or calling us we want to be called. And mm -hmm. again, guys, this is not like a person that's a transformer saying, like, I want to be a woman or a girl. This is someone saying, I'm nothing. I'm non-conforming. I'm just an uh, X. I'm just nothing. So it's just so weird to me how the, these kids not only have to be aware of, like, all the pronouns, but then you also have to be aware of there's people that don't have anything. They're just, they identify as yeah. nothing. They just... Now people like literally there's a live stream company and they have employees that identify as animals. So like one of their, no, I promise you, one of the head executives. No. Yes. Am I telling the truth, Nico? Yeah. Yes. One of the what? head people identifies as a deer. No. And they're like, yes. Isaiah. Yes. No. And they're like, hey, you need to make sure you call, use her deer pronouns. No. I promise you, this is a, a large streaming. I probably don't want to say it because I don't want to get like flagged or anything, but a large streaming platform. <laughs> the person identifies as a deer. So it's like. Do you, like, what do deer even eat? No. I mean, do you, yeah. And then there's kids now, I'm not kidding. There's kids that, this is, don't laugh at this. I'm not I'm kidding. I'm going to laugh. There's kids that identify now as like cats. And so they want <gasps> the school to have like litter boxes <gasps> for them. I'm not kidding. They're like, yeah, my kid You're wants lying. a certain type of sand. I'm Isaiah. not kidding. This is, this is what happens when you open this door. This is what happens when you open this door and you start saying, well, you can Isaiah. be whatever you want to be. You can be. Your favorite animal, you got to spin your chair back because now you're out of the camera. You're joking with me. You could be me. your favorite animal, whatever you want to be. Um, I As a kid, I wanted to be a bird, but I realized I Is couldn't that? fly. So I was like, well, I guess I can't a be a bird. A litter box? I mean, seriously, I wanted to be a bird as a kid. I was like, if I, because you know, you're like, what animal do you want to be? I was like, I want to be a bird. And then I was like, oh. I feel oh. like I can't breathe. I watched Peter Pan five times and I was like, oh, I can't fly. But it sounds so outlandish, but again, this is what YouTube's recommending your kids. So we're so going to be raising our kids with people who want to be called animals. I mean, our kids are super small private school and then homeschool if not no, but i'm just they're saying this is be like in school they're gonna be this is animals. why I, and i i, I want to do this as part of this segment and we're gonna give you like steps of like quick steps of how you could like be a, disciple your kids at home and stuff like that really practical stuff but this is why Jesus. it's just like so crazy the world our kids live in and why i'm like you need to protect your kids and protect your home because the devil is after our kids the world they live in is like so much different than the world we grew up in oh yeah like people when, I don't want to say because I know there's people watching. When I grew up, I was like, I was at the skate park. I was like, <laughs> what are y'all doing? Like, this is, I, I didn't even know any, what any of this was. No kid knows what this is no. until their parent comes and tells them this or brainwashes them, which I really what it is. I can't believe that. Yeah, it's, it's total brainwashing. It's fell out of my chair right now. So yeah, this is us. We're not chasing a fight. We're not picking a fight with the alphabet community. We love them. We pray. We believe. We know God. Same, just like every other sin. But the reason why we're covering this is because this is what YouTube recommends your kids. So when your kids make a YouTube kids profile, this video is what YouTube says they should be watching this. And they um, watch this and they're like, mommy, what's a they, them? What's a gender non-conforming binary transformer? Like, I, I don't know. It's just crazy. So let's, uh, let's keep going. Did she ever, or sorry, see, even I made that mistake. <gasps> he made the mistake. Oh! He made, wait, she, she made the mistake. She's like, look, see. You got, oh, let's, let me run that. Watch this, watch this. There's um, a girl who works at my tutoring center and she goes by they, them. And then a lot of times, oh, like I just didn't call she. And then I'm like, oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, did she ever, or sorry, see, even I. See, that's what I'm saying. It's so hard to try to remember and know. It's like, is it love to, to call you the person God didn't create you to be? Like, is it love to say like, I'm going to call you a name that God didn't, doesn't call you. Or I'm going to call you a name that God didn't create you to be. People say, well, you need to call him that because that's love. And I used to sometimes yeah. be like, maybe. But then I'm like, or is it like I, loving to be like, no, this is who God's called you to be. And this is your destiny. And this is what, like, I'm not going to call you an alcoholic. I'm going to call you free. I'm going to yeah. call you delivered. I'm not going to call you uh, they, them, or whatever it is because my... God created you to be this way. And this is God's desire. And God can set you free. And God can deliver you. And God can heal you. But look... Even she is like, oh, I messed up too. So 
not as easy. I made that mistake. Do they ever address it with like or correct people who may use a different pronoun for them? Uh, no, but somebody else might. How does being non-binary affect your day-to-day -day life? Looking for a job, there's times where like before going into an interview, I totally just want to wear like these slacks and like a button-up shirt, but will it be more likely to get the job if I wore like a, a, a dress suit or something, you know? Why is gender such a big deal? You know, sometimes I wish it really wasn't. How do you feel about, is it a big deal to you? No, I just figure like, why can't they just be a person like? Yeah. Do you all think gender is a big deal? No. Well, I mean, like if someone was identified as neither boy nor girl, it's not a big deal to me if they were in between, but like gender is a big part of who you are. That's real, Ooh. yeah. Thanks. <laughs> do you like handshakes? So that's what YouTube is recommending wow. your kids. Absolutely crazy to see just the, the confusion that these poor kids have to go through and the world that our kids are growing up in. I'm like, it's absolutely bizarre. They don't know what is left, what is so right. Sad. You know, you call yourself this, you call yourself that. You could be an animal, you can be a dog, you could be a cat, you could be a deer, and you could wear whatever you want, say whatever. And then we, who for like thousands of years, this has been male or female, but now we all have to like cater and adapt and our kids have to learn this and do this and go here and, and learn this at school. And, and for me, I, would just, I really want to challenge everybody in the chat. If your kids are in public school, do everything you can to get them out of public school. Yeah. Like, I know it sounds for some of you, it's like, well, I can't. And I totally understand. But man, this is what they're teaching kids on YouTube, let alone in public school. So how much more should we disciple them? So let's give you guys, um, we have them up here on our screen. We'll kind of go through them just quickly. Like eight simple, practical ways. And we won't go into like detail on every single one that you can be there for your kids, that we can combat this. Because we don't want to just complain about it. Be like, oh, look at what they're yeah. doing. Like the answer is disciple your kids. The answer is, actually, what we're going to talk about in a minute, what one of the answers is, we're going to show some videos and react to some more stuff. But And I'm for sure going to get emotional tonight, by the way. because Yeah, you don't know what clips we're going to see yet, but some of these clips are going to rock you. They rocked me. I watched one of them, and one of them I haven't watched. But we're going to talk about something that God is doing right now because we don't just want to talk about, oh, this is the bad and this is the negative because God is moving also right now, and we need to be there for our kids. So number one, this might sound obvious, be involved in your kid's life. Be involved. Be aware of what they're listening to, what yeah. they're watching, what they're interested in. Like don't, and it's so easy to not be involved. It's so easy to just be on your computer or do your, your work full time and you're tired and you get home and you're trying to cook dinner and you're trying mm -hmm. to clean and then you got to get kids ready to go to bed and you just don't know. And it's, it's easier to just give them an iPad yeah. and be like, just go watch the iPad. And we do that too. And we're like, we got <laughs> we got to stop doing that. You know, yeah. we got but it's easier to not be involved, but we're, we are very, very involved. involved. Very with what they're listening to, what they're everything. watching, yeah. who they're talking to, friends, everything. Like we are fully involved. You cannot be too much in your kid's business. These are not your friends. God did not give you kids to be just friends. God gave them to disciple them, watch other them. Do you yeah. have anything to say about being involved in like watching what they're watching and hey, what are you listening to? I mean, I'm constantly like, I mean, am I deleted, broken record in our house or? Yeah, we deleted YouTube off their iPads. We, they only have access to certain little things. I mean, they don't, they can't get on like the app store. So we're very like, we know everything that they're watching and they're into. And this goes into when your kids are older, people are like, well, my oh, yeah. kid's older and you know, they don't want me, which if your kids don't want you on your social want. media, I wonder why it's like, well, my son blocked me on Instagram. Well, Hey, who pays the phone bill? Yeah. I mean, I know so many kids are mad right now. Like, this is what you're watching on Valentine's day. Yeah. These kids. <laughs> but seriously though, like, man, we have to be involved in our kids' lives. Yeah. We can't let these people. And when I say these people, I literally just mean these people, the world, disciple our kids, teach our kids. We have to disciple them. And we also can't just rely on church. Like yeah. we have to be involved with so our kids. So how do you think we should go about just asking a question here? It kind of introducing because our kids are going to start one day. They will find out about all these different genders and stuff. Yeah. Do you think we should be the ones to yes. bring it up to them first? Yes. There's and be two like, genders. this is what's going on, and this is what people are trying to get you to believe, but this is... Yes. God made male so, and female. We get ahead of it before the world teaches them. Okay. Yeah, we teach them. This is what the world's happening. This is confusion. This is not God's will. This is not... Because guys, remember, we are... We are we have a biblical worldview. So we're 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 living our lives according to the Bible. Yeah. We don't care what the culture says, we don't care what the news says, 
We we know we're going to be called bigots. We know we're going to be called haters. But yeah. at the end of the day, like take it up with him. This is what the word of God says. And we're living our lives as the, the standard is God's word. So this yeah. is what God's word says. He made male and female. The male leaves his family. The female leaves her mom and dad. The male leaves mom and dad to cleave with the wife and they go off together. It's like, that's it. So that's, that's why teaching them the Genesis story, the account in Genesis and teaching them uh, God's plan with marriage. And then when they're, you know, around 10, 11, 12, going through the birds and the bees, there's a thing called like passport of purity, which we talked about. Our kids are too young for it, but going through that with them and teaching them, g giving it them it before the world does, giving yeah. them the biblical standard before the world gives them a perverted version. So be involved. That's number one. Number two is model a holy lifestyle. Don't be walking out here being a hypocrite. Don't tell your kids, oh, I don't want you listening to that and you're listening to music just as bad or worse. I don't want you watching that and you're watching stuff just as bad or worse, right? It's like, yeah. I'm an adult, I can handle it. I think you need to model holiness to them. They could say, no, my parents walked this out. They lived a holy lifestyle. My parents weren't out drinking, weren't out cussing, weren't out smoking, weren't out watching stuff. It's like, no, you're cracking open your beer while telling your kids you shouldn't drink. Like, a little bit sus. Well. You're over there listening to, you know, oldies that are just as sexual as the music of today, telling your kids, well, you shouldn't be listening to that yeah. rap music. It's like, yeah, you're not listening to rap, but you're listening to oldies that are just as sexual well. or whatever else. So I think modeling so that you don't look like a hypocrite. Number three is, uh, this just ties in, these are probably the same, is don't be a stumbling block to your kids. Don't be the reason why they don't want to serve God. So like whether that's your lack of commitment to God, your lack of prayer, your lack of desperation, your lack of hunger for God, um, your laziness, your complacency, <laughs> your compromise. Keep going, keep going. I can keep going all night. <laughs> like don't be a stumbling block to yeah. them. Be like, well, I don't want to serve God because my parents, because of, yeah. because of my parents. And I look back, I'm like, I thank God my parents were the way they were because I wouldn't be who I am today. Um, number four, and you can jump in. Remember, she could talk at any time. and can talk at me. any time. Yeah, yeah. She has a mic, guys. So don't be scared and be like, let her talk. She knows she, when she starts, I'll stop. Number four is make faith real in your home. This is like very basic praying, reading together. I, and like, I have an office, so I study, I get my sermons ready, all that, but I need to be way more. This is a huge, like, um, we like weakness to me or like, Blind what do I say? Blind spot and like Maybe? error in my life. I don't know what to say, it, but like, yeah, problem. <laughs> like, oh, this is a problem <laughs> is I don't read and study enough where they can see. Cause I mean, yeah. I have an office, I study and pray That's and a really all that. Good point. So I need to just like be intentional of just reading my Bible on the table, like just so they can see, like, this is what, I, you know, not just in my office. And that's part of, you know, I do this for a living and the whole thing. But yeah, I would say make faith real in your home, make prayer real. If someone's sick, hey, let's lay hands and pray. Mm -hmm. All the stuff that we teach and talk about and make it real to them. Be open to talk about hard topics. So if there's a hard topic, don't be scared because you're a Christian, you can still talk about it again. Get ahead of the world. And then number six, this is my favorite, is tell your testimony. Tell your story. Mm -hmm. Tell them what God has done in your life. Uh, the Bible says there was a generation that rose up that didn't know the Lord their God or the stories of their parents or the miracles that he did. So at some point, a generation rose up and the parents just stopped telling stories. Yeah. They just stopped saying, man, God's delivered us and God's healed us and your dad was this way and your mom was this way and uh, we were like this. We weren't always holy. We weren't always... And you don't have to get all graphic and be like, mommy was out doing this, you know, when she was 16. <laughs> you don't have to do all that, talk about your crazy stories. But like my wife's testimony, they listen, you know, and they yeah, know my story. There. Like, hey, daddy was an atheist and he grew up in church, but decided he didn't want to believe in God and he was bad and doing this. And so I would say telling your story is very, very crucial. Um, seven is teach them to invite the presence of God into their lives. And this is something we pray like every single night. Like ask the Holy Spirit to fill I was us. Say, it needs to be like spiritual for them. Yes, yeah, it has to be spiritual. It can't just be intellectual. Yeah. It can't just be religion, where it's like just go to church. They need on to Sunday. like see the supernatural, feel the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. So that's inviting the Prince of God, praying. Make it a, a regular prayer to just be like invite. If you're on Facebook, jump to YouTube. You're like feed is choppy. Facebook's lame. Just come over to YouTube. But yeah, teach them to invite the Prince of God. And then number eight is build a family altar. So this is like, and I don't mean literally like, hey guys, we need to get some wood and build a family altar <laughs> and put our kids on it. Um, I literally mean just have a time of <laughs> prayer. Hey, we're not out here sacrificing our kids or anything like that. Uh, you know, like tying Isaac to the altar. <laughs> By building a family altar, we're talking about prayer, yeah. devotion, Bible reading. You've been heading that up really good this year and working through it. And we're not perfect at it. We're, the struggle's real out here. We're doing our best. But this is very, very important if we're going to we're going to see revival in our kids. You want to move on to the next topic? Anything else you want to add to that or say or any advice or any questions you read? No. 
So you're good. They're you're... going really fast. So I'm trying to read them, but yeah, I know I'm going fast. And oh, you're good because we're already. An I hour think you're just in. talking too much. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you just need to talk. I'm just gonna give you more time to talk. Go ahead. <laughs> no. I have actually a Jamba Juice having drink. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no. I'll just sit here. <laughs> so late. So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. She can talk when she wants to talk. Okay. I want to go into our next segment because the answer. What is the answer to? this going on in the world and everything that's happening, the answer is what God is doing right now. There's something powerful happening. You've probably heard about it. If you haven't, yeah. I don't know where you've been. The Asbury revival know, is happening this. right now. I want to go. God is moving. We're going to talk all about what's going on there. We're going to listen to some testimonies. I'll probably get emotional. I'll be biting my lip, I guess, because, uh, Does you know. Does it remind you of the house? Yes. It reminds me of how we got saved. We mm -hmm. got saved in revival. And so but I, I already thinking. felt emotional before we watched it. So if you don't know what's going on, you're going to find out what's going on because we're going to watch it. We're going to watch the news coverage. Then we're going to watch two testimonies and we're going to talk about it. God is doing amazing oh things. Alyssa's already crying. He's already crying. I feel it. I feel it. No, God is. This is the answer to what's happening in the world. We complain, oh, the devil's doing this. God's doing this. I have nothing negative to say about this. I know there's people out there like, be cautious. Don't be cautious. Go for God in revival. Go for God with hunger. I'm going to tell you why I think this revival has been successful, why it's continuing to. But let's watch these. If you don't know what it is, let's jump into it, talk about what it is, and then we'll watch some, some of the testimonies here. So, yeah, let's do it. Some of you have been in the chat. You've, you've gone, so. Day in a row, as Josh Short reports, it's catching the attention of those even low. outside of Kentucky. A revival lasting not hours, but days. The worship experience still continuing into Monday, clocking in over 125 hours. The auditorium was filled with not only students and staff, but also visitors taking it all in. We ask God all the time to speak to us, and we want to listen. And I finally listened, and I made it here last night. I was just amazed. Uh, I just had to sit down. I just had to take it in for a while, and then I was, you know, pressed by the Spirit to worship with everyone. Wilmore Mayor Harold Rainwater attended past revivals, with one in 1970 also extending over days. Rainwater saying word spreads fast in today's age. Well, the power of the social media makes this worldwide. I got a call. I have a brother in Georgia, brother in Florida. Both called me this morning telling me that they talked about it in their churches yesterday. These things happen about every 20 years, but nothing quite of this size and scope uh, and impact. The university president saying there's no way to describe the experience in words. There's just been an incredible spirit among our students, our staff, our faculty, those who have visited here. Uh, there's been sharing. There has been radical humility, generosity, um, honesty, confessing, and just a, a spirit of humility and gratitude. Students also calling it a blessing to be part of this moment, saying it'll stick with them long after the service ends, whenever that moment comes. Truly, I feel like there's something different in my heart and the way I've, I'm viewing it. The power of prayer has really spoken out to me during this, like being able to be prayed over, but then also just getting the chance to pray for other people has been incredible. In Wilmore, Josh Short, Fox 56 News. Amazing. Let's watch this. You guys are going to love this. Let's watch one more news. <laughs> City. We've been learning about revivals, but I've never seen it. I didn't even know it was right now. The event has been going nonstop since last Wednesday. WKYT's Chad Hedrick is live on Asbury's campus tonight. And Chad, I understand they've opened up even some overflow spaces there. Yeah, Bill and Amber, at one point, two chapels here on campus had to be used for overflow spaces because Hughes Auditorium here behind me was so full and they were playing a live stream of what was going on inside. Thousands of people have come from all over the country to be here for this movement and see what's happening here in Wilmore. For students at Asbury University, what's happening this week on their campus, they can only describe as an act of God. The last several days have uh, kind of blurred together. The passing of time is no longer a thing. A service okay, led by let's students that started see. on. Let's be clear on this. These are thousands of yeah. young college students gathering, not for a concert, mm -hmm. not for a secular movie, not for a rave, not to come do drugs, not to come Amazing. see a celebrity. They're literally gathering to experience the presence of God. This is what America yeah. needs. If you are a pastor or a leader that has anything negative to say about this, 
I don't, I can't, I would even question if you're even saved or not. I don't even know what to tell you because this is beautiful. No big name speakers, no projectors, no fog machines, no lights. Literally, <laughs> I have tons of Alyssa's crying over here. I'm going to cry when you hear this testimony because this kid just reminds me of me and uh, it's going to be crazy. But no big names, none of this, just people are coming. And I have mm -hmm. friends that are like, you know, very famous that have gone. They're like, dude, there's literally just some young people singing and playing guitars and people are just crying and repenting and turning to God small amounts of preaching here and there but it's very sovereign it's very authentic the school's been shutting down it's been going for like what a week now and these are all college kids that are coming to experience god now people are coming from all over the country because of the vi virality of social media but it's absolutely amazing this is how we got saved i was gonna say it just is bringing me back yeah we literally got saved in, in revival like the living room yeah in a living room we got saved in, in revival i mean i got saved days before but it broke out right after i got saved and like we were in revival for years and we and we're revivalists we love mm -hmm. revival we love what god when god does this it's sovereign i heard one person today i won't mention names or anything but they're a public christian public figure they're like well you know you could have what's happening here at your sunday morning it's like no god does these sovereign yeah. moves these special moments where his presence dwells in a spe special, unique way. We know God's mm -hmm. presence lives in us, duh. And we know God's presence is at your church, but there's special moments. So we don't want to downplay and be like, oh, this, you know, you could just do this at your yeah. church. We had an event, we've had several events last year with three, four, 5,000. It's not about numbers. It's not like, because there's 5,000 or 1,000 people. It's the presence of God moving in a special way, reviving these college students, getting them hungry for God, getting them desperate for God, and it's absolutely beautiful. And so I'm going to try to get out there. I don't know. My schedule's really busy, but I'm cheering them on. I think it's amazing. Let's keep Wednesday, watching. Wednesday, still going strong the following Monday, and no signs of ending. Just our usual Seven like, so service far. and praying and singing, and then it just didn't stop. People are driving and even uh, flying in from all over to witness and take part in this movement. Mississippi, Texas, New York, and even California. A lot of people have asked me if it was manufactured or set up, and I would just say, like, I don't think you can manufacture freedom. I don't think that you can manufacture joy. For the second night in a so, row, yeah. the main auditorium was so full, overflow spaces had to be created, but many choosing to stand outside the doors and listen. Everybody wants to be in a community and everybody wants to be wanting the same thing. So, I mean, it's... They're all coming for God. Yeah. They're literally, these people are Is lined up. Is even preaching or no? No, there's just like, just li there's a little bit of preaching, but it's just like faculty or students wow. sharing testimonies and praying for each other. You're going to see in a minute these crazy testimonies, but it's just people are hungry for God. Crazy on the one hand, but it also makes total oh, sense. Okay. Disconnected. Did yours disconnect? Yeah. Okay, hold on, guys. We lost our earphones. Technical. Go on. Give me yours back. Give okay. us one second, guys. Technical difficulties. This is all part of it. They disconnected. Let's see. Sound back on. Oh, oh yeah. Your my, AirPod case. <laughs> my AirPod case is a bottle of Gatorade. Let's see. Let go. The devil is a liar. As for when this... Yes. Okay, we're going to work it out. We're going to work it out. No reason to stress. I used to stress over technical difficulties, but I realize there's no point to it. You're doing a lot better at the studio. What's that? Not stressing about technical things. Yeah, I used to stress a lot. My wife knows I'm Everything had out. to be perfect. Ah. Okay. And this is beautiful. Service might end. Some students say it won't ever be over. Just take on new life and meaning. Um, it will slow down. And I think when it slows down, I think there's going to be like a huge commissioning. And I think it's going to be like, this is great. And this has like been a crazy awesome week. But um, the spirit that's here is like within believers. And so when they go out, it's not going to shrink. Like it's going to keep going and going and going. I'll tell you why it'll never end. Because once you're touched by revival, yeah. you'll never be the same. So yeah. the event might end, but what God did in the hearts of these young people that are coming, experiencing such a tangible move. This, the last time this happened was in the 70s. So they've waited how many? 70, 80, 90, like what, 40, 50 years for this move of God. It hasn't happened in 40, 50 years here. And it's happening again, and, and it'll, it'll change everything for these kids. And you're going to hear this guy's testimony, but man, I'm so touched by this. It's an answer to prayer. Again, I don't know how you could be a hater. I mean, like, how does this hurt you? <laughs> Pastors are like, well, they didn't invite me to preach. It's like, dude, get over yourself. This is a sovereign move of God. Yeah. Nobody cares about your ministry. Nobody cares if you didn't get invited. No one cares if they're not tagging you. Um, I think uh, there was a very big profile guy there at like three in the morning. There was like 20 people there at three in the morning. He was in there worshiping and praying. He's a very high profile preacher. It's like, 
And he was just worshiping and praying. It's like, dude, just go and worship and pray. You don't need to be recognized. You don't need to be, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. There's no names. There's no screens. It's just Holy Spirit moving and people like to be able to go and listen to young people with acoustic guitars worship. Oh, it's the best. And be there for hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on now. That has to be God. What yeah. young person's like going there instead of a rave, unless it's the presence of God. And you can tell again, by Jaime, the crowd has certainly thinned out some from what it was earlier this evening, just packed here on campus of people wanting to get in. But you can still hear them singing and praying inside the auditorium, so likely going to continue into that seventh day. Allison herself says she spent about 100 hours this week. Already. She's been there 100 wow. hours this week. This young girl, Allison, who was on the interview, just experiencing the presence of God. Beautiful. Ready here in the auditorium. Live in Wilmore, Chad Hedrick, WKYT. Chad, thank you. Classes went on as normal today on campus, but campus faculty and administrators are said to be being very flexible with students who want to attend the chapel. I'm like, man, I'm getting in revival. Forget about going to class. Okay, so let's listen to this. This guy, man, I love this so much. This one that yeah, We've this been is crying out like for you. revival in our yeah. city. In our We've city. been learning about oh, you know revival, know but I've happens. never seen it. <laughs> it's on autoplay, so it played the next video. Okay, this is beautiful. Let's watch this testimony here. And I'm going to do my best to bite my lip and not cry. We've been learning about revival, but I've never seen it. <laughs> I didn't even know it was real. I'm like, they're, I'm just sitting in class and they're telling us all these stories on college campuses and then going across the nation. And we're like, where, when is this going to happen? And then they lock you in a prayer room and you're just like, hey, you got to ask for it. And we're just sitting there like, God, I'm asking. What, what does it look like? And then all of a sudden, my friend Jaden says, dude, if Jesus just localized himself and just sat his throne in a room, how could we not drive six and a half hours to go see yeah. And we get here. And we get here. And it was like completely here at like 6 a.m. and it's completely silent and I'm like well, um, is this revival God <laughs> and we walk upstairs because we're kind of nervous we're like kind of shaking already we didn't get any sleep just they're terrible road trip partners they both fell asleep I drove most of the way but besides that we go upstairs and there's people like sleeping and we're like so this is revival God. No. <laughs> cool this, this is awesome and then chapel starts and immediately we just see people flooding in. And God said, revival isn't hype. It's ordinary people who are hungry. It's ordinary people who are hungry. And he said, Gage, I'm going to need you to go to the altar. And I'm like, I don't want to go to the altar. <laughs> and he's like, go to the altar. And I go to the altar and worship starts. And he's like, this is revival. Look left. And I look left. And there's this young college woman getting prayed over by an older woman. And he says, look right. And then there's this young guy praying over an older guy. And he says, look behind you. And everyone's just raising their hands. And he said, Gage, this is revival. It isn't hype. It's ordinary people crying out for a move of God in our generation. And I'm here to talk to everybody in this room who is hungry. What an honor. What an honor it is to be here. Revival's real. It isn't just a story we've heard about. It's come. And it's not just come here today, but it's about to spread out to the nation. It's about to spread out to the United States. And I'm here to talk to every young person in this room. I just gave my life a year and a half ago to Christ, and it has been the greatest thing I ago. have ever done. I left everything, and I'm here to talk to every young person in this room. Forget the job, forget the girl, forget the guy, forget everything. He's worthy, he's worthy, and I'm here. And I'm just saying, oh, it's such an honor. If you don't feel that joy inside saying, of you, I don't know what's going it. on. It's real. Amen. I love you guys. <laughs> That's literally what happens in revival is you forget everything. You forget everything. You forget everything. You don't care about anything. You don't care about the world. You, you don't, don't care about the boyfriend, the girlfriend. Uh, I love what he says. Forget everything. That's so genuine. That's so God. That's so you're crying I again. Know, I know I just, it's amazing. It's beautiful. It's beautiful when God does that. It brings back so many, so many memories. memories. Yeah. When we first got saved and that's you abandon everything to go. I nothing can't even talk about it. Nothing uh, else matters. I get too emotional talking about it, but. Ah, uh, deep breath. Hold he on, reminded me, me so thoughts. much of you. Yeah. That's why I get very emotional talking about it. 
But yes, you find the treasure and you sell everything to buy the treasure. But these are all young people. This is what America needs. This is what this generation needs. If you can get out there, go out there. There's no names. There's no... It's scary because I think the moment big names get involved, and I'm not being rude, I'm a big name. I'm not, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but I, I'm big name. I would be considered a famous preacher or a big name celebrity preacher, whatever you want to call it, because of the amount of followers I have. Uh, but the moment people get involved that have names is when the spirit of God's like, well, I'm not going to get glory no more because, you know, it's Isaiah or it's so and so or it's so and so. So I just think it's beautiful. I know people are like, caution. It's like, dude, be cautious of what? Go hard, yeah. go after God, abandon everything. Stay all day, stay all night, neglect your responsibilities, be in the presence of God. Who cares about all the religious stuff that people are afraid of? Like, I, I, I just can't imagine people are making these videos cautioning people. The only caution I have is don't be letting no religious people get that microphone. Don't be letting none of these watered down, lukewarm pastors get the microphone. Let these young people preach. They might not be all, what? What was that? So nice. They might not be there theologically or have all the perfect testimony. They're going to mess up, say the wrong things, but let them. They're hungry. Jesus said, let them come unto me, the young ones, the little ones, the new ones in Christ. And so I'm just afraid that some religious adults are going to get up in here and start trying to regulate it and say, oh, we need to be theologically sound here and this stuff. It's like, dude, just let the Holy Spirit move. He's doing something special and sovereign, and I don't think this is happening everywhere. I don't yeah. think we could just have a meeting with 5,000 people and next week and have the same like sovereign moment with God. We all have the presence of God. We all have yeah. revival in us. We, we know. Okay, don't be up in the comments like, well, we all have it, brother. We know that already. We, we have the Holy Spirit. There's something special about what God is doing here that is amazing. It's beautiful. So yeah, I've, again, I've had a bunch of friends go. They said there was no, not, a little bit of preaching, just worship, prayer, repentance. It's been marked by worship, prayer, repentance. And it's touching. This is how you got saved. I know. And this is what, this is what. It just takes you back that nothing else matters. Yeah. You'll quit your job. He'll do anything just to like sit in a prayer meeting. Nobody preaching. Yeah. Let God move. Let God handle it. Don't begin up here with all your religious crustiness. Let's watch her. I haven't seen this, so let's see this. May it flood into them. May they feel your presence in this very moment like they never have before in their entire lives, oh God. You are in this place. Oh, you are in this place everybody. richly. We can feel your presence like a blanket. It covers us all, oh Lord. It. And anyone, anyone who has doubt. And they don't believe that this prayer, or the, the prayers of others here are like, they don't believe these words are meaning anything. They don't believe God hears. God hears. God hears every single prayer we ever prayed. He's listening right now. And even if he doesn't answer our prayers today, that doesn't mean he's not going to answer them. Because he is working in all of our lives. He is working, and, and he is here. He is here. His presence is with us so richly. And... Each person that is standing and those who are, are not standing, those who have the courage to stand. God, be with each of those pretty people, Lord. May they know that you made them, that you formed them, that you knit them together. Not, not, you knitted them together for a reason. And the things in this world, they're nothing. Whatever fears, whatever anxiety, whatever past so trauma, pure. it holds nothing. Because your name cast it out. Your name is greater, oh Lord. Oh God, we need not be afraid here in your presence. We need not be afraid to stand, to ask you to come down and live in the hearts of these people, Lord. We, we say your name rules above all anxiety, all depression. When, when Satan comes in our minds and says, you are not enough, we know that you say, we are your children. We are loved. We are known. And whatever is holding us back, whatever is holding us back, whatever change, whatever obstacles from bowing at your feet, from coming to this altar and saying, God, I surrender all. Lord, may be broken. The devil has no place here. He wants to take us. He wants to take us from this place. But you are here. Your presence is here. And the devil has no power here. Every person here, may they leave with your presence richly in them, oh God, so richly that they will never forget this day, oh God, that they know they have the power to cast out the devil. Whenever it comes to Come anyone they now, love, to anyone they know, when it tries to take take these beautiful lives, when it tries to steal us away, God, you are here and you love us and you can cast that out. And today, give us, empower us, give us the courage to surrender because we know that you can fill us with your love and we you can fill us with your power, God. Let us surrender. Oh, everything, may it fall away. You are all that matters. Nothing of this world, no power, nothing rules, nothing matters. It's only you. And if we have you, we have everything.
nothing, oh God. We have everything. Thank you for this place, oh God. In your name I pray. Cast it all out, Lord. Cast anything that is not yours out, Lord. Oh God. Deliverance prayer. Beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Oh. The desperation, the hunger, just the innocence. So, I was going to say, she's so innocent. Yeah. I was say. It's so beautiful, the hunger that these kids have. You can tell she just got touched. Yeah, it's fresh. And we, we need to keep it going. So religious yeah. people, keep your hands off of it. Let the move of God happen. Let the Holy Spirit move. This is like of all the new stuff we watch about young people and how depressing it all is, this just gives hope to what's happening in the world. And like we just watched... You know, a uh, person tell another, tell kids like, oh, it's okay to be any binary gender, whatever you want. And then the contrast is there's still a generation. There's still yeah. a generation that wants to serve God and wants to know God. And it's absolutely beautiful. The hunger, the desperation, just the cry for revival. I think the biggest challenge is going to be adults getting in there and yeah. religious people and denominations and like, and one reason why everyone's coming, because it's not labeled as like, this is charismatic, this is Pentecostal, this is cessationism, this is, it's yeah. just God is moving. Come see, worship's happening, repentance is happening, and these young people are getting touched, and God's, touch, God's touching the colleges. The devil's not the only one pouring out his spirit. The devil's like, I'm going to pour out anxiety, I'm going to pour out yeah. rage, I'm going to pour out anger on these college students, and God's like, I'm going to pour out revival, I'm going to pour out my spirit, I'm going to pour out desperation, I'm going to pour out deliverance, miracles, signs, wonders, and so it's going to work itself out. God is having his way here, and I, it's beautiful. I want to I go be a part of that. If I have the time, I'm able to, but if not, I'm cheering you guys on at Asbury. It's amazing what God is doing. And I hate to go now to the next segment we're going to talk about. Oh, no. a, lot of, a lot of Christian movies coming out. On Friday, we have Greg Laurie talking about the Jesus Revolution on, on our podcast live. So if you guys didn't know, Greg Laurie will be this Friday on my podcast. It's Friday night special with Greg Laurie talking about the Jesus Revolution. We have Come Out in Jesus' Name, our documentary coming out about deliverance, March 13th. We just had The Chosen out. There's another movie coming out. It's not coming out in theaters, and I'm not trying to throw shade. But there's another movie coming out called American Gospel. Let's go to here. American Gospel Spirit and Fire Extended uh, Preview. So we're going to watch the extended the version. I don't know if it's good or bad. It's the first one. I, I, I wouldn't recommend watching them, to be honest with you. The first one, it was very leaning towards cessationism, very against, in my opinion, very biased against the charismatic movement, against, you know, they're mainly trying to say they're against prosperity gospel, but they tied in a lot of like miracle signs and wonders. They always tied that in, which by the way, charismatics are not the same as word of faith. They're not the same as prosperity. We don't preach prosperity gospel. We don't preach word of faith. That's completely different, but they try to tie everyone together. So th this is what they're saying about this documentary coming out. We're going to watch the trailer and I'm going to give you my thoughts. And I hate to quench what God's doing Asbury because a lot of these people that are like cessationist driven are against revival. They're like, revival is not the answer. Um, they're saying this is a very, how do I say it? Non-biased documentary. So they're saying... There are other ones where for sure biased, let's be honest, but they're saying this one's non-biased. We're going to have like Dr. Michael Brown, who's amazing. Love Dr. Michael Brown. We've had him on the show. He's a charismatic. And then they brought on some other charismatics to basically try to be like, you know, give a fair shake to the charismatics. But in my opinion, with the way this trailer is edited and done, it's, it's, it's definitely trying to throw shade at the charismatics. Let's have just be honest. This? I've seen parts of this trailer, but I'm <clears throat> going to react to it. But they're definitely trying to say... You know, every, all the charismatics are the same and we're all, you know, we're all weirdos and stuff like that, which we're definitely not. So let's watch this and then I'll give you guys my thoughts and we'll pause it and we'll talk and everything like that. I know you don't know a lot about this like, movie, I don't know. but yeah, I'll, I'll give some commentary here. So with Reading, our, you know, our three major economic engines are tourism, methamphetamine, and, you know, marijuana, the drug culture, and then Bethel Church. So they start out by saying, oh, no. yes, that's what I'm saying. They, and again, I know the makers of this are going to watch this. I know the creators are going to watch this and they're going to say, oh, well, it's non-biased. Dude, you can't start your trailer saying there's methamphetamine, whatever. And then Bethel is like, the tr is like what's happening is the, you know, I know what they're trying to say. They're trying to say like people come to Reading for Bethel, but it's just not a good way to start. Bethel Church trailer. is no. Remember, this is supposed to be their claim to American gospel non-biased. They're trying to say they're non-biased, but let's just... Globally. People come to Bethel from all over the nation and the world for healing. They say that the, the anointing is stronger here. A couple who attends Bethel Mega Church in Reading is getting national attention for asking Christians to pray for the resurrection of their two-year-old daughter who died unexpectedly. Remember that? 
so they they stood and believed for this girl who died to come back to life and they got so much heat everyone said you shouldn't do that yeah. you should let let the parents grieve the parents were the ones leading the charge leading on worship this, leading the worship praying for their daughter to be raised from the dead and now they're going to use this story to say we're a bunch of crazy charismatics. Let, wow, let me be clear on a few things so before sad. I start this. Um, my re my response or my review of this trailer is I'm not. I don't. I don't uh, promote Bethel at all. I don't promote their theology. I don't send people there. I'm not against them, but I'm definitely not in promotion of like yeah, Bethel and stuff because I don't know them. I don't know what they're doing. I don't. I've never been there, so this is not a promotion of Bethel at all. But I think it's really sad to take a bunch of these clips and use them in your documentary and basically be like, look at these crazy charismatics, which by the way, the people that they are going to make look like scholars in this documentary are people that absolutely hate charismatics. And some of the guys on this documentary have made videos about me where they literally say the meanest things you could think of about me because I believe in miracles and deliverance. Some of the people that are interviewing this documentary. So there are a lot of them. There's a lot of mean spirited uh, mean spiritedness in the in the cessationist movement and in the God doesn't move anymore movement or gifts aren't for today or miracles aren't for today. And at one side, they say you know we're true to the Bible, but the other side they're not true to the Bible because they don't believe in what the Bible teaches. Like cessationism is not a biblical doctrine. It's a, it's literally a false doctrine because the Bible doesn't teach it. So like in a literal sense, saying the gifts aren't for today is a, is a false. So if my daughter died, I would pray for her to be raised from yeah, the dead. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And God's going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. But you're going to pray. pray. Yeah. We believe. Are we crazy for believing that? No. I mean, we believe, we believe the it. Bible. Yeah. We believe the Bible. It happened in the Bible. It happened to Lazarus. I after would pray three and days. I would hope everybody else would pray. Yeah. So they're, they're going to use that. And I know a lot of the cessationists have and been like, so it's so sad. wrong that these parents prayed for their dead baby. It's like, well, just because you don't guys don't believe in miracles doesn't what mean parents you don't. Wouldn't? But yeah, this is not to advocate for Bethel. Again, uh, I'm unbiased when it comes to this, but this documentary is supposed to be unbiased and the first 39 seconds, I already know where they're going. We have a biblical precedent. Jesus raised the dead. So I went to Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, uh, did three years there, so it's a three-year program. The leaders of this movement claim to be apostles and prophets with extraordinary authority, miraculous powers. Some people locally call it the Christian Hogwarts. They charge tuition. They call it the Christian Hogwarts. So again, they're going to do their best. I don't think it's, it doesn't seem unbiased to me, but to shed, you know, charismatics in a bad light. Again, we, we had revival for 10 years and we weren't laughing, shaking, falling over and doing a lot of the manifestations that you see like out we of Bethel. We weren't like weird. Yeah. Oh, but, um, and not, not that, yeah, we haven't <laughs> been to Bethel, so we can't tell you, but my point is not every charismatic is this shaking, crazy word of faith. Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn style, like with what they would put and say to teach so. you how to use, which this is Benny Hinn's nephew, I think, who's now like goes around basically saying like how false Benny Hinn is. Or even think, received the sure. gifts of the spirit. They are part of a movement called the New Apostolic Reformation. This NAR thing is basically a conspiracy theory. Yeah, the NAR is a real thing. It's not a conspiracy. This guy can't stand me. This guy's made countless videos about really? me. Yes. He says uh, he's he's probably the rudest, one of the rudest, <gasps> rudest guys on YouTube. I'm not kidding. He's just theory. like the this way is it is described oh, doesn't yeah. exist. I oh, see. Dr. Michael Brown. So Dr. Michael Brown is standing for the charismatics and like that guy, them, they're like basically saying like we're NAR, New Apostolic Reformation, which I didn't know what that was. And apparently I'm NAR too, but it is a conspiracy theory. It's basically anyone that's charismatic or believes in miracles or pursues gifts like the Bible says do. They basically were considered like. NAR, yeah, it's like, it, it literally is, and you'll hear Dr. Brown. An unbelievable hypercriticism. This conspiracy theory was adopted by heresy hunting evangelicals. Endless people damning us to eternal hell fire. I mean, here, and that's here the I am. thing. These guys making videos about us, they say we're going to hell. They literally, it's not just like, oh, you know, he's off in his doctrine. It's like, this guy is a wolf. He's going to hell. Like, imagine I've lived my whole life serving God, reaching people, seeing the law saved, but it's like, we're going to hell because we believe in miracles. First Corinthians says to pursue gifts and we are doing that, but because of that, we're going to hell. And that's what the wow. NAR, if you're NAR, it's like, dude, you're going to hell. And that's apparently what we are. So I don't know. I, I, I am not a fan. I'm just going to be honest and open. I am not a fan of this, this documentary or this trailer already because they're like, it's an unbiased. 
It's like, really, dude? I know video editing, I know filming, I know cinematography and all of that. This is definitely biased. As an like, apologist, it's a minute and a half finding in, myself confused by this movement. My own home church uh, was decimated by NAR teaching, and the church never really fully recovered from that. I'm painted as a leader. And of course, they're going to get people that have been hurt by Bethel or hurt by these churches, and they're going to interview them and say, oh, I was so hurt by this, that what, that, I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, Dr. Brown says he's painted as an NAR here. In NAR, and I don't believe any of those. Oh, well, let me rewind that. I messed it up here because I, I paused it. <laughs> My own home church uh, was decimated by NAR teaching, and the church never really fully recovered from that. I'm painted as a leader in NAR, and I don't believe any of those things. We've seen a lot of pain come out of this movement. It was the first time I feel like I truly understood the gospel, and I was sold such a cheap bill of goods. This movement impacts Christianity at every fundamental doctrine of the faith. Standing in the office of the prophet of God. Now, how are we supposed to know whether an individual is a prophet. I execute so they're using Kenneth Copeland, which by the way, Kenneth Copeland would be considered like word of faith, prosperity, not like a, a voice in the charismatic community or church. So again, like just poor representation, poor representation. Uh, it's just. On you, oh. I had to come to the terms that I was not a prophet and I was also a false prophet. Yeah, this is the sash that I received. Uh, the night I was released as an apostle. So if somebody were to say to you in the ancient world, I'm an apostle, the, the immediate question would be, well, who sent you? When a church changes its leadership structure to apostles and prophets, what follows is all this aberrant theology. By the way, let me just make something clear because I'm definitely a big voice in the charismatic world and Pentecostal world. I do not know one person, this is for everyone in the chat, listen closely, and the creator of this documentary, I do not know one person of all the apostles I know that claims to be like a modern, like a biblical apostle. It's a completely different context. No one I know is trying to write scripture, write canon, or believes there's some special superpower apostle or prophet. This is, again, a, in my opinion, the NAR thing is a conspiracy theory. Anybody that's charismatic, oh, you're NAR. Oh, you're NAR. We discredit you. You're NAR. And these, all of these people would consider me NAR, and I don't even know what... I had to go look up what the NAR is because they've so made this into this thing where it's like, if you believe in miracles, you're NAR. Oh she Crazy. came up, you know, manifesting her laughter, <laughs> acting intoxicated. <laughs> this goes back to April of 1993 when Rodney Howard Brown was visiting the Carpenters Church in Lakeland, Florida. <laughs> He's also this, known the as way, the... I don't do all the laughing and all Father that. of holy laughter. Build, 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 build. And the Holy Ghost bartender. But I want you to know tonight the bar is open. If you were to be in the immediate presence of Christ, you, you wouldn't have a laughing revival. Do you not know our history? There's incidences of it happening under Finney, the first and second great awakening. Okay, so Randy Clark, Dr. Brown, they're going to be the voices of charismatics in the show. They're the ones that are like speaking on behalf of us saying like, hey, you guys are wrong in some of these areas. This happened when Pentecost came to Canada. A bizarre religious phenomenon called the Toronto Blessing. This is where you go to catch the fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit. There was laughter, there was joy, there was drunkenness in the spirit. There's no biblical precedent for being drunk in the Holy Spirit. These things. There's also no biblical precedent for believing that the gifts have ceased. Just saying. Are not oh. novel. And that <laughs> made the Toronto Blessing incredibly controversial, even within charismatic circles. And I believe that the fruit of what happened vindicates that it was of God. But just what is revival? They've soft-pedaled God's warnings have made the reality of hell a fairy tale. The Brownsville Revival was the most sacred glorious work I've ever been a part of in, in my life. We are not just bad people. That's our friend, Dr. We Michael are Brown. Sinners. Every single night, Jesus was exalted in worship. And until you realize you're a sinner, you will not realize you need a savior. Every single night, calling for repentance from sin. But revivalism 
is when man tries to manufacture that. At um. any moment, revival could come. Bring revival! Revi yeah. Yeah. At any moment, revival can come. That's a bad thing to you? How are you going to make it bad? How are you going to be like, it's so bad to think that any moment revival can come? And they like, why, why do some people hate revival? I don't understand this. They're people turning to God. You want them? Because they've never experienced Preach. Preach. Yeah. I mean, religious people always condemn religion, yeah. condemn experience because they don't have them. Like, so if you don't have like experiences yeah. with God, I, I always say, like, I would rather have strange fire than no fire. I mean, seriously. You know, John MacArthur makes his strange fire conference. I'm like, uh, you should rename it to no fire conference because we have people out here that are, they don't even know what the fire of God looks like, what the presence, the passion. These are young people hurting, broken. We just watch clips of revival and then we're going to put that in a negative light. Like, revival is just me. around the corner. You're constantly chasing after it. And so I thought, yeah, we chase God. Of course, we're always chasing God. The Bible says to pursue him. The Bible says to pursue the gifts. So they tell us, don't pursue the gifts, but the God I'm pursuing tells me to pursue the gifts and to pursue him and to pursue the miracles. So it's so bizarre to me that the Bible literally says to chase and pursue God. And you're telling us like, we shouldn't be chasing around. I'm going to keep chasing. Thought, well, I don't want to miss the next revival. And what if it comes in a manner that we're not used to seeing and we miss it? Pastors orchestrated first revival. You cannot plan a revival any more than you can plan a hurricane. And Amen. this thing just kind of spread all over the world. I remember in 1996, we had guys from Toronto come to India. And so in Mumbai, we had something called Catch the Fire. Bill Johnson says he caught the fire and he came back to ready. I believed it was God, so I'm taking the seatbelts off. I'm jumping head first. I was ready. I had my hands up. I was like, today's the day. I'm about to fall out in the spirit. Here it goes. And they hit my stomach and nothing happens. And I'm like. They shouldn't be hitting your stomach. I mean, we don't hit people. Well, Y'all out there, you need to stop hitting people. Don't be hitting. Yep. Don't be pushing. God doesn't need your don't help. push them to the ground. You can just gently lay your hand on them. I usually won't even do that. But pushing people to the ground no, and going WWF not. style out here. Like, this is not. <laughs> we're not out here wrestling. We're out here praying for people. Like when people pray, they literally yeah, like. Pushing and all that. Throw them I, on the I ground. I don't get down with the pushing. Do not push. I'm like, you do not need to like yank me to the ground. Yeah, no, we don't. We don't do that out here. Do it again. Just, ugh. Do I think some people got in the flesh? Let's get the fun back into <laughs> church. I thought this is the Holy Spirit, and this is how he moves. More Lord. The Bible says. And of course, they're going to take all the most extreme yeah, 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 yeah. sides of charismatic. They're not. And the thing is, if they just showed normal charismatics, like we, it wouldn't make the video because it's not as exciting to them. So they have to show the most extreme. Like I don't get down with all that, and they have to show all of that. Because uh, <laughs> it's just... He said, I got beat up at a no-fire conference. Yeah, it's just crazy. But the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. I try to barely, barely, barely advance. <laughs> the question is, oh, is yeah, what is barely. the source of these... Another well-known cessationist who doesn't believe God speaks to people, who also does it. And I'm not so, trying to make this a slander I video. I know, but that's, just, that's so boring. But also d doesn't believe God speaks to people, doesn't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, supernatural. Do I think some of the manifestations Supernatural through the lives of stations was not of God. God wouldn't do that. Why would God do that? And it felt like a bolt of electricity hit me in the chest. Not just me, the two ushers with me. It was as though a thousand volts of electricity is going through me. The minute I took one step in the fire tunnel, I felt. So, it, so they're basically saying like how they're trying to make it sound like it's so crazy that you felt like electricity. It's God. Who knows what God feels like? The Bible says the mountains shake at his presence. So maybe you will shake. Maybe you will fall. Maybe you do feel electrocuted. But how are you going to get mad at someone saying they felt they got electrocuted? I mean, I don't Overwhelming know. sense of fear. Do I think some of the manifestations was actually demonic? Yes, 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 yes. And as soon as she pulls her hand away from me, she looks at me and she says, you have unforgiveness in your heart. What we really are doing is we're manipulating people. Did it have its issues? A hundred percent. But the fruit of what God did in Toronto is evident globally. And I can point to hundreds, if not thousands of testimonies of the amazing things, including my own life, that God did through Toronto. If you want to see the real power of God unleashed, it's not in fake signs and wonders. The real power of God is the gospel. Well, how, how, who are you to say they're fake? 
How are you going to say, well, and how are you going to call signs and wonders that you don't, you weren't even there, fake signs and wonders? Like, yeah. that's a bit scary to me. Like, to say these are fake signs and wonders would be to say that you're God. I mean, how can you discern and say these are fake? Like, indefinitely, these are fake signs and wonders when you weren't even there. And that's the thing about revival and even the charismatic movement is we step out and take risks. So, of course, anytime you step out and take risks, there's going to be failure. There's going to be people, stuff happening. There's going to be in anything. But if you're never jump, stepping out of the boat and taking risks, of course, there's going to be no fail. There's no mess. You're not literally not doing anything. You're just like, well, I'm just going to read the Bible all day. And it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not Father, Son, and Holy Scriptures. And I think we've gotten to a time where we've worshipped the Scripture and not worshipped the God of the Scripture. We don't pray to the Bible. We don't bow down to the Bible. We don't worship the Bible. We worship the God of the Bible, and we believe that he can do what he did there still today. Like, how do you read the Bible and go, how do you read the Bible and go, I don't know if this stuff happens anymore. Like, what are you, what are you reading? It's not, it's crazy. John G. Lake is... This is the extended trailer. You're like, longest trailer ever? Yes. I know, that's what I was thinking. This is the extended trailer. <laughs> yeah, the, the regular one's like three minutes, and it's... Presented as being this phenomenal healer credited with we hundreds of thousands yes. of healings, like miracles, <laughs> visions, prophecies. I said, God, <laughs> would you give me... The <laughs> well, Alyssa's breaking out into some holy laughter right now. Hold on. No, this isn't the movie. I guess it's a docu-series coming out. I hope I hope it's not as biased as this trailer. Is it? This is. For, do you think this is? Do you think this is biased? No. Who in the chat thinks this is unbiased? Like they said, oh, no, this, is, this is biased. They're like, this is unbiased. I'm like, you're literally putting like every crazy dramatic clip you can find, and making it seem so terrible. The mantle like, of William Branham. I was born and raised in the Branham message cult following. This was a movement that was not of God in any way, shape, or form. It's been said that those who are cessationists believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Scripture. I just said that. You just quoted me. And we've essentially ruled out the role and function of the Holy Spirit. Skimmed it. But nothing could be farther from the truth. I absolutely believe that God still physically heals people today. I believe God can do miracles. I believe he will do. This is what they all say. Cessationist, please, this is my plea to you. Stop saying, I absolutely believe God, but you just don't believe he can do it through people. Like, I don't understand this. You believe God can do it, but God can't work through a person. His spirit can't move through a person. When you preach, you're literally speaking the words of God. You're speaking on behalf of God. We're God's ambassadors, the Bible says. So they all will say, we believe in miracles. It's only if God decides sovereignly he wants to do them. Yet all throughout the scripture, God was working through people. The entire Bible is literally God working through mankind, even in the Old Testament. And how much of a greater covenant now the Holy Spirit's not on us, he's in us. Would God not work through do people? Miracles, but only when it is uh, his sovereign will to do so. He's already revealed his will. His will is to heal everyone. But there's something about hearing a physician <laughs> say to you, I think that you'll be lucky to have six months. It's hard to hear. It is really hard to hear. Christ is the ascended king. He has triumphed. We share in that triumph. That doesn't mean that we stand in front of graves and call people out of their graves. The book of Acts is not given to us to attempt to reenact. The real question... What? Why not? The book of Acts was not given to us to, to attempt to reenact. Why, why can't we live out what what they did there. There's no amen to it. Is I, I understand. what is normative? My guest has raised 37 people from the dead. Where's the proof of this? I do know people who raised more people from the dead than Jesus did. Jesus didn't do miracles to show us what God could do. Jesus' statement is not that hard to understand. Greater means greater, and the works he referred to are signs and wonders. He didn't perform miracles to show what he could do. It's meant to make you think that you are at the same level of Jesus. Nobody thinks that. Speaking as a leader in the charismatic movement, nobody thinks that they're the Whatever same. Whatever he Jesus. did, I can do. He came to illustrate. I mean, he said we're going to do the same works. John 14, 12. The same works I do, you're going to do, and even greater. So, like... People are like, I can't believe you think you can do the things Jesus did. He literally told us the same works I've done, you're going to do. I, I'm like, what do you mean? He literally said it and even greater. What a human being could do. He performed miracles to show what you can do. 
And the more that happens through Christians, it doesn't detract from what Jesus did. Christ is unique. It brings glory to the main work that he did. They can't duplicate Amen. these miracles no matter how hard they try. Maybe we're not reading the New Testament correctly. I would say one of the greatest sins is the church just sitting in a pew, building Preach. this, yeah. and not actually going and doing what Jesus actually did. Yes. And not going to the poor, the sick, the needy, and the broken. Everybody skips over those verses. Apostolic anointing, and so we just rip it right out of the ground. We just suck it right off his... That guy, this guy is a complete heretic. Everybody knows that. Is it John Crowder? I think his name is something like that. He's a, considered a mystic. He's absolutely crazy. I, I never call people heretics. I'll go on record saying this guy's an absolute heretic. He tokes the ghost. He shoots up in his arm, the Holy Spirit. He does all the most disgusting, bizarre things you can think of. He's definitely not. He's definitely not. Like, how are you going to put this dude in the documentary? Like, dude, this guy... They this always guy, need the extreme. Yeah, this guy's an absolute heretic. <laughs> this guy's not a charismatic. He calls himself a mystic. So, yes. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, grave soaking is terrible. I would never do that. I'm just telling you, this guy's not the guy. Dead to bones in Jesus' name. <laughs> I don't think you have to be a cessationist, for example, to be concerned about adopting new age and or pagan and occult practices. Okay, and this is whack right here. So, as an apostolic this is team whack. with the authority. Like, why are we, why are we out, Charismatics, why are you out here doing this stuff? You're making us, you're making us look terrible. Getting a Gandalf staff, this was, this video, they're literally, video. yes, they got, it. they got a staff. They said, just like Gandalf got his staff, we're going to end uh, racism. Is, yeah. Yeah, this, this, may, this is terrible. I do not so know to this. Are we not going to have like a premiere meetup for this movie? No, we're not. <laughs> we're not. We do not advocate so far. I mean, maybe, maybe it'll be good, but as of right now, it's extremely biased. They say, oh, it's going to be unbiased. No, it's not. But this is crazy. Right that here. God's given to us. Yeah. They really believe they're apostles. And they believe they have apostolic authorities. We decree and declare that racism will end. It's, it's blasphemous and sad. Thinking somehow they can recreate a scene from the Lord of the Rings. No, shall not pass. And in defense oh. of the people making this documentary, they actually didn't take that out of context. They actually said the they way did, she yeah. actually said the way Gandalf yeah. slammed his staff to end whatever. We're gonna say what Gandalf said, and we're gonna make racism not pass. I kid you not. So they did not take this out of context. It's actually as crazy as they said, and it, I think this is wrong. I think this is weird and wrong. They definitely didn't take this out of context. And if the NAR is real, which I don't think it is, then this is definitely NAR. But we don't we don't do this. This is. Weird. No Do you feel like yeah, they you really backed into a boring, dead form of Christianity when you moved out of the NAR movement? No, if anything, I came to life. How was I so prideful? How was I so entitled? I think he was the Bethel student that was came out of that and was like, I don't know what he's I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you. Yeah, uh, all the people in that clip did it. Uh, with the Holy Spirit and with it. fire, his winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff <laughs> with unquenchable fire. Oh, is this your... Good to see you. Good to see you too. Josh Lewis is a friend of mine, Remnant Radio. I've been on his show several times. He's a uh, charismatic. So, but yeah, stationist, I guess he's continuationist, stationist. yes, best buddies, tell the people how it happened, I guess. This isn't about Pentecostalism versus Reformed theology. This is about misrepresenting something beautiful and edifying and sovereignly given by the Holy Spirit. See, I think you know, Dr. the scripture Brown says that God hates unequal weights and measures and and that's what grieves me as I see some of this trailer. I know there's an attempt to be balanced, but I could make a whole documentary of all those that came out of cessationist churches and had their spiritual life totally transformed when they came into the things of the spirit, the power of the spirit, Thank churches you. that were totally transformed. And I could do a whole documentary about those that, that left charismatic Pentecostal churches and, and left some of these spiritual movements and went into cessationist church or reformed church and, and their faith became bankrupt and they fell away from the Lord. I could do a video about that. 
I could blast seminaries and say there are seminaries where you have to pay money to learn how to preach the Word of God or how to pastor a church or how to study the Bible. I mean, we've got to be careful when we caricature and paint certain pictures. You want to know who the real Bill Johnson is? Watch the sermon he preached after losing his wife to cancer after years of praying for yeah. healing. Friends, it's important we come with equal weights, equal measures. That's why I'm part of this documentary. Man, I agreed to do this interview because... So, well, we don't watch all this. Truly, they basically are telling why... These charismatics are saying why they agreed to do the documentary. And it seems very, 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 very biased to me. I don't see how this is giving charismatics a fair shot. A yeah. lot of the stuff... I, I would agree, like... A lot of that stuff I saw is crazy. I, as a charismatic, yeah. I think that's crazy. We don't we do not do or get down with any of that. But all those guys in there, you guys don't probably know them because you're not as nerdy as me, but I, I've seen a lot of them and watched some of their stuff. Most all of them are reformed cessationists. And they would not say, they would not say, oh, that guy that's charismatic is my brother. They would say that guy's a heretic and going to hell. Like several of the guys on the documentary have publicly said on their YouTube channels, I'm going to hell, I'm a heretic, I'm the worst Bible teacher in history, and on and on and on, because I believe in deliverance, I believe in miracles. So yeah, it's like, it's just it's just wrong. It's bringing disunity in the body of Christ, and I still am looking for the doctrine of cessationism in the Bible, but it's not there. We're gonna watch another video, and then we'll do some Q&A and stuff. I know we've been live for an hour and 37 minutes. You wanna watch one more, and then we'll... This one caused quite another a stir. Another preview or another movie? Well, no, we're not watching a movie. <laughs> it is it is a little bit long, but we're just going to watch it and see What's what it we about? think. It's about many Christians will go to hell because of this. Oh. So I've done a video about Ellen Parr's view on deliverance. We did a re refuted it in the past, but this video, well, we're going to watch it, caused a lot of stir in the Christian community, has 423,000 views. A lot of people that are on the free grace side got really mad about this video a lot of people that are like i would say once saved always saved we're making videos saying i can't believe alan said this about christians but let's watch it together i'll give you my thoughts on it and we'll kind of react to it i could probably speed it up but if i speed it up guys the voice sounds kind of weird and i don't really like when people speed up my videos so <laughs> maybe we'll just leave it normal and then we'll do some q a after but let's watch this tonight is react night so if you're like why are you watching videos that's literally what we're doing literally what we're doing tonight so we're going to react to it. We're going to talk about it. And then I'll pause it here and there, but we'll just watch most of it. Again, causing a lot of stir, 423,000 views. I'll give you my take on it. I've got news for you. Many professing Christians who go to church every Sunday, who give money to their church and probably were raised in a Christian home, unfortunately on judgment day, are going to sadly find out that they are going to hell. And my friend... Ooh. That's a strong hook. Do we disagree? That's a strong hook. It is very possible that you watching this video right now very well may be in that number. Okay, so from my understanding, wow. Alan Parr, I, I might be wrong on this, and I'll, I'll have him on the podcast at some point. My understanding is he's more on the side of once saved, always save, uh, more, I don't know, and I guess like just believe type but maybe not because he made another video after this so for him to say that is very very strong because people are like what how could ellen parr say that that's a very strong title and by the way cessationist cessationalism which i don't think ellen's a cessationist pretty sure he's not i don't want to misrepresent him at all but cessationism is where you believe the gifts no longer function through people today it's it was just for the bible time the gifts of the spirit are no longer a thing miracles don't happen through people anymore god's moving but not like i can't lay hands on the sick anymore that doesn't happen anymore for the bible time only which is obviously he, i do not believe that i don't think i'm part of cessationist no I'm, i believe he he's believe, like, a continuationist believe? So I think he's in between like a cessationist and like a charismatic would be like a continuationist. I know theology oh is not goodness. what we always talk about on the channel here. So some of you guys are like, what are all these terms? I don't even but know. But this caused a big stir, I, I would say, in more of his community, not my community. We, we were like, hey, amen, that's preaching strong. And again, I don't want to make, make a false representation of, of him or who he is or what he's teaching. We have disagreements on deliverance, but I think he's a great Bible teacher. And I want to watch this and see why is everyone so up in arms about it. Now, that opening was not meant in any way to spark any sort of fear or shock value. <laughs> <laughs> you did, you did. He's like, that opening was not meant to shock you or spark you. Hey, I mean, that's YouTube. A... You gotta keep people on. You gotta have a good hook. But for sure, it being like, there's a lot of you in church that are going to hell, definitely would shock you. But hey, let's see. How you in you. But the reality is that Jesus said that one day at judgment, he's gonna say, depart from me, 
I never knew you. Now that's not the passage of scripture that we're gonna look at in this particular video, but what I believe is happening in our society today is that we are placing such a huge emphasis on just believe, believe, believe. Amen. And let me be very, very clear. Believing in Jesus Christ is the only prerequisite for being a Christian. The question is, what does it actually mean to believe? And what does it actually look like to believe? And is your belief consistent with your behaviors? Because James says that if you have faith without works, that is a dead faith. So I believe that there is another passage of scripture that we're going to dig into today in this particular video, that if it was explained to more people who say they want to be a disciple, who say they want to be a Christian, before they actually walk down this road, if they were to truly think about it and try to uh, understand whether it is they want to take this step, I think we'd have a whole lot less false conversions and a whole lot less people who are deconstructing their faith. Let's jump in. Beginning in Luke. Hey man, I'm glad he's saying this because I thought he was more like, just believe and you're fine. But James says, faith without works is not saving faith. It's dead. So you, there, it goes, it's not just, I believe and live however I want the rest of my life. It's believe I'm saved and then works are produced. Not as the, so works would not be the root of salvation. They'd be the fruit of salvation. They're not the cause. They're the effect. It's, you get saved and then works are the byproduct. You don't work to get mm -hmm. saved. Your works are evidence that you've been saved. Yeah. And there's a huge debate because there's like what people call free grace theology versus lordship salvation. The lordship salvation means like God has to be Lord for you to be saved. And the free grace says like grace is free. Just believe you can do whatever you want, which I do not think that's biblical. But yeah, so Alan's, that's why he causes stir because I think a lot of his community or maybe the people that follow him or his friends are more to the side of like everybody's just believe and you're saying chapter 14 verse 25 it says this now great crowds were traveling with him now let's just stop right here we're going to break this passage of scripture down i want you to visualize this for just a moment you may have to close your eyes and i want you to imagine this huge crowd of people who are traveling with jesus and basically they've heard about what he can do Someone said, you would not dare invite Ellen Parr. He will take you down live. <gasps> take me oh. down. Like we're talking about like wrestling or <laughs> take, get my stream taken down. Get me banned. Like, I, I don't know. How's he going to take me down? a good debate. Don't be shocked if one day you see him sit next to me. And we end up doing a, a thing. That, uh, listen, I don't divide over secondary issues. So he did, me and him have difference of opinion on deliverance. We could still be brothers and I could still watch his yeah. videos and I could still recommend people. I'm not the guy that says you're a heretic because you don't believe what I believe about deliverance or whatever. But I don't know about, I don't know about taking me down. They've heard about him <laughs> raising scared. the dead and healing scared. the blind and, and healing the sick and doing all these different things. And, and maybe they're following him because they want to see a magic show. Maybe they're following him because they need something from him. They want to be healed. They want their, uh, their, their family members to be healed or whatever it is. But what Jesus is getting ready to say in this passage, he is going to separate the committed from the crowd. And I want you to ask yourself while you're going through this passage with me, are you just part of the crowd of people that are following Jesus? Or are you part of the committed that Jesus is going to explain and describe are you part of the crowd or the committed that's a good word he's mm -hmm. preaching so here now attention. let's keep going now great crowds were traveling with him so he turned and said to them if anyone comes to me now let's just stop right there because what we see here is that whatever jesus is going to say next he is applying it to anyone and everyone who says they want to be a follower of jesus a disciple anyone who names the name Christian. He says, what I'm getting ready to say is what I am requiring of somebody who says they want to be a disciple. Because oftentimes we think, oh, you know what? Uh, I can do this because I'm not a pastor. I'm not a minister. I'm not a missionary. I'm not this. I'm not in ministry. Oh, no, no, no. What Jesus is getting ready to say is it, it, whatever it is, I, I'm applying it from the pulpit to the pew. Okay, let's just see what he says. The first quality of a disciple, somebody who says they wanna be a Christian is that they elevate their faith over their family. Notice it says here. Oh, this is gonna make some people mad. This is gonna make some people mad. He said, elevate, let me turn, let me, let me, let's try just a tiny bit faster here. This is a longer video. 
But he said, ele they ele If anyone comes to me and does not family. hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and later on it says, he cannot be my disciple. And this is one thing we make salvation so, so easy. And I'm not trying to make it harder, but Jesus says statements like, unless you hate your mother, father, yeah. brother, you can't be my disciple. Uh, Jesus didn't make it super easy. In fact, Jesus said easy is the way that leads to death. Hard and difficult is the way that leads to life. Yeah. When they said in Luke, how many will be saved? Jesus said, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many will seek to enter, but not be able to. So Jesus said, strive. I know you're like, oh, it's not about works, brother. It's like, uh, Jesus did say to strive. Paul said, work hard to prove you're among those God has called and chosen. So this, what I call, what I would call easy believism, where you just, oh, just believe, brother. Well, even the demons believe. James says there has to be more than just, oh, I believe. So yeah. Jesus is basically laying it down here. Now, I want you to understand that the way I sped him up 1.25. Jesus is using so. the word hate here. He's not talking about uh, uh, seeing somebody in a negative light. He's basically using hyperbole to set the bar so high that he's basically saying, how you see me and everybody else, there should be such a huge gap between your faith and every other relationship, so much so that in comparison to me, it seems as though you hate these people because you're so prioritizing your relationship with me. And so, listen, you might be in a situation where it's difficult to share your faith with your family or your friends, or you might risk embarrassment or shame or whatever. And Jesus is saying, if you want to be a disciple, you have to be willing to elevate your relationship with me with Amen. Jesus Christ, and that has to take preeminence over every single other relationship. The person that you're dating, even the person that you're married to, every other relationship. Quality number two, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So now he's talking about sacrifice over self-centeredness. You see, there's this tendency in our lives to want to do what we want to do and to do our will. But Jesus is saying, I am calling anyone who wants to be a disciple to a life of surrender, a life of sacrifice, where we constantly put down what we want in exchange for what God wants. But see, what we want to do is we want to compartmentalize our lives. We have certain things that we say, okay, God, I'm going to give you control over this. Oh, but not over this. Right? I'll, I'll let you control over my money. I'll give money yep. to the church. Oh, but I don't want you to control my, my sexuality or my dating relationships or my marriage or what, you know, you may want me to do with my career or my money. So, so it's like we're, we're, we're got one foot in, but there's some areas of our lives where we're just not willing to surrender. And he says, if you want to be a disciple, what I'm calling you to is a life of total and complete surrender. See, this passage it needs to be explained to new Christians so that they know exactly what they are getting themselves into and what they are signing up for from the jump. Let's keep going. Quality number three, pain over pleasure. Now, notice it says here, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You see, in these days, there were a lot of people who were losing their lives because of their faith. And here's the reality, saints. Jesus, for most of us, is not even calling us to a life where we might be in jeopardy of, of losing our lives or being a martyr. He is just simply saying, you know what? In this life, there's going to be pain. There's going to be difficulty. There's going to be humiliation. There's going to be shame. There's going to be suffering. I don't know how I don't know how people are mad about this video. People were making videos. People are mad about yes, this? they were like, he's making salvation hard. He's making. They were saying like basically I feel he's like preaching. It's really good. They were they were saying he's preaching like works based salvation, and these are people in his community. Not us. I'm like, hey, man, preach, brother. But I was like, I want to watch this because the t video's titled Many Christians Will Go to Hell Because of This. And I'm like, why are people so mad about this and stirred up and going crazy? Did he just change his... I mean, I think people... A lot of the comments maybe, are saying that he... Maybe people thought he was more like... Changing. More free grace, once saved, always saved than, than he came out and made this. And people are like, well, this sounds kind of... I don't know. This sounds like what Jesus preached. Yeah. He's literally quoting Jesus. Jesus is like, if you don't do this, you can't be my disciple. There's a cost. There's going to be all of these. There's going to be loss. I already know y'all are going to, y'all love this. You guys like convicting preaching. Everyone in the chat's like, well, hey, amen. This is yeah. great. There's like, going to be financial struggles. There's going to be yeah, marital I, stress, I like strain, this. and struggles. But see, the issue for many of us, because we're not taught this, because we've been fed this cotton candy gospel, this watered down version of Preach. the gospel, this secret sensitive type of. Ellen, if you've been watching my videos, come on, bro. I don't know. That's I did. What, so many comments are like, I think he got delivered recently. I did. <laughs> I did comment on this and he uh, responded back. 
like thanks man keep preaching That's so really maybe good. we'll do a collab soon but no i'm kidding but for real, gospel good this here. gospel from the church and from the pulpit oftentimes where they're afraid to mention sin they're afraid to call out certain things they're afraid to, to challenge people to go deeper in their faith what happens is when these things come into their lives they're disillusioned and they don't know what to think because they've been fed this lie that everything in their life is going to go well and as a result whenever pain comes whenever it's time for them to carry their own cross they want to shake their angry fists in the face of god and ultimately leave the church and ultimately leave the faith and jesus is saying i sped him up yes if you guys can handle my preaching and talking you can handle him sped up 1.25 hey, i'm actually calling you to a, a life that is going to include pain difficulty and hardship number four relationship yeah. over yeah. religion notice he says here whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me or another version says follow me cannot be my disciple now do you see the strong language that jesus is using here cannot be my disciple so he's inviting us to a to a relationship with him not just religion he says, you have to follow me. What does that look like? That means spending time with him. That means praying. That means fasting. That means trusting. That means learning. That means obeying. That means worshiping. All That means putting our, our, our trust in him. See, what religion is, okay, let me go to church. Let me give some money. Maybe let me, you know, uh, hang out with some Christian friends or whatever. No, those are all religious activities. What Jesus is calling us to is a life of intimate fellowship. Someone said, wait a minute. Yeah, this is kind of fire. Not going to lie. Yeah. With him. I like that. Someone's I'm like, like the one who writes. He says, look, if you don't come after me and follow me in relationship, he says, you cannot yeah. be my disciple. Number five, commitment over convenience. Let's see what it says. But don't begin. I'm reading this from the New Living this time. Until you count the cost. I love this. He says, hey, this is what I've been getting to this entire video. He says, don't even start down the road of saying you want to be a Christian you want to be a disciple of Christ. He says, don't begin until you think about it, until you consider, until you count the cost of what might be. Yeah, so it's not just close your eyes, raise your hand, pray this prayer, count the cost. Required of cost you of discipleship. as a fully devoted follower of Jesus. That's why I said this passage needs to be taught to every single new believer. As a matter of fact, if you have a friend who just got saved within the last year, send them this video and make sure they watch this so that they are not disillusioned about what it means to truly be a Christian. Let's keep going. For who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there is enough money to finish it? He says, who does that? Who starts building an entire building only to realize his conclusion you might here. be scared, you might be thinking. Listen, this video was not intended to spark crazy fear in you, to make you question your salvation. No, no, no. But it was intended as a heart check, as a warning. And for some of you watching this video, it should create some fear because if you've gone most yeah. of Amen. your life Hey, and if you're really being good. honest with yourself, just honest, you have no relationship with Jesus. You may call out to him whenever you need something or you pray whenever something's in trouble. But, but you, let's be honest, you, you don't really read your Bible. You don't really pray. Preach. And you're really not going to church. And it hasn't yeah. just been that way for a short season. This has been a consistent theme of yours for most of your life. This video was intended for you. This passage of scripture was intended for you because it's intended for you to take a close look at your life and ask yourself the question, am I really a Christian? Because the answer to that question could determine your entire eternal destiny. And if you want to be a Christian, the only prerequisite is that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But that belief, my friend, should be a byproduct, a natural byproduct of your belief, should be followed up with changed behavior and a desire to be a disciple, a fully devoted follower of Christ. So I pray that as you take a look at your life, you'll use these six principles to guide and assess where you're at on your journey of being a disciple of Jesus. And if you're a church leader, I pray that you would use this passage, as scary as it may be, and it might scare some people away, but I pray that you use this passage to truly communicate what it means to be a disciple of Christ. That's the video. Many Christians wow. will go to hell because of this. People were mad, like, ah, oh, I own part. That was really good. I thought it was really good. I thought it was a great video. I agree with, I, yeah. I, don't, I didn't find one thing that I was like, oh, I don't agree with. I think that's wrong. I think he was preaching strong. I think people are just soft and they want just this. Easy. Easy, easy. Do whatever you want. Just believe, brother. You don't have to put any effort in. You don't have to do anything. You can be your phone if you want. We did two hours of reacting. That went by quick, huh? That was really, two really hours good. Sometimes? Yeah, those two hours of reacting. That was oh, the first wow. time we ever did a reaction stream, y'all. We've done recordings, but we've never done a reaction stream. So two we've hours done of re one recording. Reaction? 
No, I'm saying that we've done recordings. Like I've done this. Oh, I've I've done. Not not you. (laughs) She's my co-host, so she's just chilling, hanging out, reading comments, and uh, talking whenever she wants to. So do you feel like you can talk (laughs) whenever whenever I'm allowed to talk? You feel like you can talk whenever you want. (laughs) Yeah. Well, now you got to be. You got to tell these people are new. There's 2,500 people here. They weren't here in the beginning. Whenever I would like to talk. We had to open the stream with Alyssa is free He's to talk. He's not overpowering me she wants. and all these comments. Some of y'all are like, oh, man, you need to I let do your what wife I want. talk. <laughs> you don't let her talk enough. Can you make the full screen the chat? Just make it full screen now. Yeah, you could just. Awesome night. Things worked out good. Oh, yeah. It, it, it resized. There. You got to just make. There you go. Uh-huh. We got some nerds behind the thing <laughs> over here working Like, it don't up. worry. He got All it. the ch- <laughs> chats are on screen. You guys hung out with us on your Valentine's Day. I wore this for you since mm-hmm. you wanted me to wear these colors. But yes, nice. Alyssa knows she can talk as much as she wants whenever I'm she wants. Definitely not. She just doesn't like to talk. I know. And oh, by the way, you guys were like, why weren't you live last week? I got the flu. I got, I, we were going to go live. I was shaking, shivering. I was sitting here. We had a babysitter. I was ready. Tell the I was truth. all into it. I was sitting here and then it just didn't work. Well, we had a computer problem. I don't understand. That but either. I also Some was. Some Bluetooth problem. I had a hundred fever. I didn't realize it. Yeah, he didn't I was shaking, good. shivering. I was like. We're like, you got to push through. I was like, I'm ready. I'm just going to push through. I'm ready to go live. Hit the live button. And then we had a thing in the computer not working. It was the grace of God because I went home. Excuse me. Had 100.5 fever and then had 102 fever and was sicker than dog. I was so sick. I was like, I'm never streaming again. I'm just going to go home and be with the Lord. I literally thought oh, I, literally thought I was so going to die. Oh, that is so dramatic. I'm not kidding, dude. I thought I was going to die. No. I was like, Lord, take your servant. Oh. I was like, Lord, receive he my spirit. He had the man flu, people. No, dude. Literally I was, the man flu. Every time I'm sick, Alyssa never thinks I'm sick. She's like, you're fine. You're. I was but so... But you just lay there. I was up all night. <laughs> I was dying. No, we got the I flu. I was in bed for two days. We got the flu at the same time, and I was still changing diapers and feeding the kids and everything, and you laid in bed for a week. I don't remember that. Oh. <laughs> I was sick. I was sick. When I get the flu, dude, I get it bad. He gets the, the man devil's flu. A liar. He gets sick, you guys. I'm, I feel slouched because you're a little higher than me on the screen. Hate being... No, no, no. You got to slouch a little bit. I, oh yeah, you're gosh. higher than me. Yeah, see? Is that better? You got to slouch okay. a little. I hate, I hate being a Everyone's like, guys are streams. so dramatic. They're so dramatic. But for real, okay, so for real, I have Everyone the, thinks girls are dramatic. I have to show her because she doesn't believe me. I'm like, I have 102 fever. And she's just like, like oh, okay. you're fine. You're fine. I'm like, what, dude? I'm dying. I need all my prayer warriors out here praying. I really Honestly, was super Honestly, the sick. last, I, I tend to just and leave I was still you alone. Recovering I just from, leave you alone. I was also still recovering from burning my lip with a Cinnabon. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, burnt, I burned my lip. I burned my lip with a cinnamon. Go look at the joke. Go look at the joke video, and you can see that he legit. Did I burn my it. lip? Yes, with I a got cinnamon. Like a Nico and Stevie brought us cinnamons, and he microwaved it, and then ate it, and it literally burned the like a The super hard, scab. sticky part in the middle <laughs> got stuck on my lip and was like frying me. I was like, ah, and I couldn't get it off. <laughs> Let's talk about guys and girls being dramatic right now. <laughs> yeah, I burned my lip, but no, I was really sick. I woke up, I was sick Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday I woke up feeling amazing and I've been mm-hmm. feeling amazing. But you know when you're like really sick, I was just like, I think I'm never going to stream again. Like in my head, oh, I was just dying. God. So I'm like, I'm probably just going to go be with the Lord. I was seeing visions of Abraham and Moses and all that. But I got better. Praise the Lord. Thank you guys for praying. The Cinnabon took me out too for a day. Had they some said, burn I on said, my lip. you know, uh, exercise patience <laughs> with the Cinnabon. Oh yeah. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it didn't even seem that hot, but you know, the middle gets like molten lava when you warm it up. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it cooked my lip real good. I'm going to stop cheating Chick-fil-A. Okay, so guys, if you want to give, you can donate. The link's to give. We're not going to read all the donations tonight because I don't have the screen set up. I forgot to set this thing. But you guys can give down below. You can give in the comments. Support us. Help us out. Become monthly partners. Um, we're going to hang out and talk to the chat. You want to hang out for a little bit with the chat? Okay, we're going to hang out with the chat a little bit and read your guys' questions and whatever you guys want to say to us. Now's your time to say it because now we're actually reading the chat fully. But then also remember that... We have Friday podcast with Greg Laurie this Friday, 6 p.m., and then I'll be at Life Song this Sunday. So if you're in California, do me a huge favor and come shout me down, 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. Come show strong at Life Song this Sunday, 8, 15, 9, 30, 11, and 12, 30. I'll be preaching four services, Stockton, California. Go to my website, isaiahsalivar.com slash schedule, and you can find all the info there. So you got to eat healthy to have a strong immune system. That I don't eat. That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, it could be that. Someone's like, maybe you get sick because you're unhealthy. I'm like, you think? <laughs> no, no, someone told me that. Like a friend of mine. I was like, you think? Who I'm said like, that? 
I'm not, I'll tell you later. I was like, I, I know <laughs> I'm unhealthy. That like something I would say. I was like, I know I'm unhealthy. I don't eat. I literally don't eat. So it's not healthy to not eat. They're asking when you're going to bring Z on. I'll bring Z on soon. Z, have you started the gym? No, I haven't started the gym yet. Mm -hmm. I wish we could turn this chat bigger. It was, there was a setting last time, but it's, it's gone. You go, I haven't maxed. You go to appearance. I maxed it out, but for some reason on this thing, it's not. Yeah, see, it's scaled. It's maxed out. Oh, remember we turned the screens bigger. We'll do that later. No worries. Antioch. Yes, I'll be in Antioch the 25th, February 25th. With Z. Okay, help me read these comments, Alyssa. Uh, you know I'm not good at that. Uh, what's go a good fast. fast time for a window for a beginner? One to three days if you're a beginner. Do 20 push-ups? Uh, I'm scared. Oh, do Did you do anything for Valentine's Day? Do yes. We did something. We streamed. We're here. We're here. It's Valentine's Day. This is what <laughs> we did. We love you guys so much that on our Valentine's Day, we're like, no place we'd rather be than here streaming with you guys. So here we are yep. with you guys. Look at this. Yes. Re help me read these. They're coming in fast. When someone dies, I'm going to receive judgment. Yes, to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. You stand before the judgment seat of Christ whenever you die. My, everyone wants my Where'd you shirt. get your shirt? What does it say? It says. God is hood? Good. Oh, God is good. God's good. I thought it said God really? is good. Really? God is I'm just good. Kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I got to be nice to you because you know the people. The like, people oh, you're are teasing like, me again. Yeah, the people are like, oh, you're don't tease your me. brother. You need to be nice. You um, guys, it was from a boutique. So oh, there sure we go. The name. Wow. Yeah. There we go. Big comments now. Isaiah, stop telling us that you're going to go to the gym. Linda, please. Oh, Linda. I'm, I promise you, I'm going to. I have a membership and everything. I'm just busy. Y'all keep me busy. You guys want me to keep streaming? It's frozen. No, it just oh. got to scroll to the bottom. It's just Nico. It'll reload. There we go. <laughs> you rock. Thank you. I'm glad you guys had date night with us. He wanted a Cinnabon, but he got a Cinnaburn. If you stand up at the movie screen. <laughs> yeah, I got a Cinnaburn. If you stand up at the movie screen at IMAX. Oh, no, it disappeared. <laughs> Is the movie come out in Jesus' name only appearing for one day in theaters? Yes. Right now it's one day, but they added show times. Oh, I forgot to talk about that. Oh, We're doing a meetup in Manteca, California. Zip code's 95336 for the movie. 7 oh. p.m. sold out. 300 seats. But we're doing a we'll second showing at 10 p.m. So if you buy your ticket, if you're like, I wanted to go to Manteca and watch it with you, come watch it with me at 10 p.m. If you guys buy tickets, I'll go. If there's like three people, I'm not going to stay till 10 p.m. Yeah. But yes. Can you tell us more jokes? Oh, more jokes. Some of y'all got seriously offended. Oh, I don't understand. That's another comment we can talk about. I don't understand how we people told Christian were so clean. Mad. No, no, don't say people. Like just a few people. Like okay, maybe one out like, of 100 or 1,000. I would say like 10. We're very, very upset. People were like, how dare you make a joke about Jesus in the Bible? I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, they said, it was literally yeah. a clean. If you can't laugh at a clean Christian joke, I literally don't know what to tell you. Like, seriously, it was a clean Christian joke. It's yeah. not blasphemy. It's not heresy. It's not making fun of Jesus. We literally said, what car do you think Jesus would drive? And people are like, <gasps> Jesus <laughs> didn't drive cars. He drove chariots. It's like, dude, chill. <laughs> yeah, if you want to come see it, 10 p.m. is open. I know it's late. But yeah, some of y'all just need to seriously chill on the whole being a, just keep scrolling. If you don't like the content, if you're here tonight and you're like, he didn't let her talk enough and he, he watched too many videos, just on to the next one. Keep Hi. scrolling. Keep scrolling. You don't have to comment. Don't even waste your time. It was a funny, clean Christian joke. You have any more? God is a God of laughter. He created laughter. I don't have any more. Fun. But no, that was funny. I almost choked on my water. How can I receive the gift of tongues? Ask. Be thirsty and ask. Yeah, I don't understand. How, you guys, some of you are just softer than a waffle. Just, if you don't like it, just keep scrolling. Someone's like, I had a stomachache. You blasphemed the Lord. I'm like, dude, I literally said, what kind of car would he drive? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. Why do y'all look alike? Do we really look alike? Everybody's been saying that. The chats, my brother says no. God has a sense of humor. He created laughter. If you don't believe that, I don't want to tell you. We can't make clean Christian Bible jokes. I don't even know what we could do anymore. They might want a Cinnaba. Oh, I missed it. Can you interview subscribers? I'm not sure. Sometimes getting people on is, you never know. Tell the joke. Well, one of the jokes is why wouldn't they let Jesus in the jewelry shop? And then the aunt, the, we tell them, the thing um, was. How I answered it. Well, it's hard and to I ruined that. everything. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to explain that. They were afraid he was going to break every chain. Why didn't they let Jesus in the jewelry shop? They were afraid he was going to break every chain. He literally breaks chains. Like it's the play on words. And people were like, what? How dare you say that? It's like, come on, dude. Be cool. Spouses tend to start looking like each other. Okay. What are your thoughts on Andrew Tate? He needs to get saved. What'd you get each other for Valentine's Day? I got her flowers. She got me a card. Who, who knows what else? That sounded weird. That sounded inappropriate. I didn't mean to be. 
Your opinion on pornography, it's terrible. Stop watching it right now. You look like brother or sister. Can we get the missile pop sweatshirt? What does that mean? Or can we get the missile pop sweatshirts? Oh, that's yours. Dude. You. <laughs> Someone say, where can we get the missile pop? <laughs> oh, you're saying I look like a missile pop. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm not turning red. The lighting is literally <sighs> pink in here. Like, um, this was on Amazon. It's a, it's an Adidas, Adidas Amazon sweatshirt. Atten opinions on transformers being pushed on children, agenda being pushed on children. I have a lot of videos on that. We did a video on that today, so you can rewind it. I think it's disgusting. Maybe we did too many videos. I didn't think it was going to take two hours, so maybe next time we do half of that. You mean not as many long ones? Well, I had a lot to say about the cessationists that are coming after us. Yeah, a lot of those guys do not like me. It's okay, though. I don't like them either. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um... Yeah, but that was probably rude. Just want to say hi from <laughs> South Africa. Sometimes these intrusive thoughts, I probably should just say what I think. Not just me. Um, do the kids read the Bible with you guys? Well, we read it with them. Yeah. French toast is amazing. Yes. Any ones you see, let's say you could just read out. They're popping up quick. What did you guys eat for Valentine's Day? We haven't ate yet. How come you didn't, you didn't talk about the Grammys much? I love when, when I just that. ramble my words and you can't understand it. Did you hear what I just said? Also, what did you do for uh, Valentine's Day? What did we eat, eat for dinner or something? We haven't ate yet. Yeah, we didn't eat. Is your hair dyed pink and blue, Alyssa? No. It's the lighting. It's the lighting. the lighting. It looks so good. They think it's dyed. What did y'all think about the Grammys? It was demonic like usual. It's always bad. The devil's just flexing. There's never been a good part about it. Yeah, it was. That guy. That guy's. That guy. Come on. That guy's a joke. I don't know what to say about it. My theater's almost sold out. Let's go. They're adding show times. They just added one in our area. You have a video of people who Gotta eat are something. Yeah, I'm working on it. Unequally yoked. Uh, no, I don't. The four beasts. I have a video on the four beasts if you want to check it out. Just search. You should look into Adidas working with Balenciaga. Well, actually, no one's working with Balenciaga now because they're pretty much getting canceled. I think they're going bankrupt. Yeah? Yeah, they're going bankrupt. Yeah, I heard they're working with Disney now. Oh, Disney's working with them. Of course. Disney's like, you guys are demonic. Come on in. You guys like to be predators on kids? We we love you doing that too. That was sorry. Yeah, sorry. I know. <laughs> sorry, I, you can tell my my disdain for Disney too far. <laughs> that was too far. Sorry. The voice. When everything. I don't have nothing to do with my hands, I get a little crazy. Too far. I'm used to doing stuff with my hands a lot when oh. I'm sitting here just chilling. You know what I mean? <laughs> here, we're gonna put just list on screen while I recover from no. that. I gotta recover. Sorry about no. that. There's a little recovery here. Um what are your thoughts about UFO sightings? Uh, Ooh. UFOs. They're just, they're, just leading, they're just preparing us for when Jesus comes back so they can say, oh, it's just aliens that come and he's just a big alien. But it, most of the times it's demons. I don't believe in aliens, like literal aliens. But the UFO sightings are all just like, I think they're just balloons, stuff like that. You know what I mean? I think it was a balloon from China, wasn't it? Somebody wants to know who's laughing in the Not background. Not the evil Disney voice. That's my brother laughing in the background, controlling the computer. Yeah. We need to get him a camera. What are we going to eat for dinner? I'm not sure. Cam. I know we do. Thoughts on Mr. Beast? I don't have any. He gives away a lot of money, which is cool. I don't even but know who that is. I don't think he's Christian anymore. He used to be a Christian. How's the puppy? Good. Do people uh, sleep till judgment day? Well, there's a great white throne judgment that's different than the judgment seat of Christ. Isaiah has me dying. I'm glad I can make you laugh. I did get into character a little bit. I kind of, I kind of got into that. They want Nico to get a laugh cam. I know we need a. <laughs> we need it. We need a laugh cam for Nico's It'll be like background. Like literally laughs. the best part of everything. Yvonne Tunny Hill, we love you. She said, "I love oh, having both of you." Next time, Isaiah co-host, laugh out loud. Yes. It was basically this was it. Either I go on here by myself, sitting in this chair, talking Carl to you guys, is fake, or Alyssa goes on with me. And co-host and doesn't really talk a lot because she's like, I don't really want to talk too much. So I was like, just come on with me. Excuse me. Like, I don't mind doing this. It's just. Yeah, she doesn't want to like teach or have to like react to the videos and talk about like yeah. theology. So oh, I was like, I'll do all that. Even I'll react. You just be with me as a co-host. You gave me all these movies about denominations I know, I know. and stuff. These are probably like, not the right ones to pick for you. But for you're co-hosting. It's all good. All good. He's my older brother. I miss Carl the Pigeon. Hold on. Like Somebody said, do you videos. have Carl? I'm like, yes. he's fake. Oh, wait, I don't have him on the widescreen. I, I forgot to put him on the, I put him on the screen speak beginning. Spanish. We did bring Carl to the new studio. He knows nothing. Evil. Yeah, I don't believe in like actual aliens. I believe a lot of it is demonic. When people say I got abducted and they put something in me, it's like, no, that was, that was probably a demon at night. Is the studio in your house? No, it's in another house that we got for the studio. Is acupuncture new age? I'm not fully aware of everything about acupuncture, so I don't want to make an uneducated statement. 
You keep asking, do people sleep until judgment, Anthony? Um, it, it, I'm not trying to be rude, but you absent from the bodies and present the Lord. You stand before Christ on judgment. You go to either heaven or hell, and then there is a great white throne judgment. There's different judgments. There's not just one judgment. There's a judgment seat of Christ. There's a great white throne judgment. I have a video on judgment day. Check it out of all the different judgments. Why, Alyssa, why are you dissing Carl? I just said he's fake. Like, we don't own him. What? What? Um, what? Apparently we own <laughs> I own him. He lives on my hard drive. What do you okay, mean? Okay, we'll put him up then. He's on the stream oh, beginning he screen. He's on the stream beginning screen. Yeah, we could add a source. Don't make us. No. Don't make us. Oh, hold on. Keep talking. Oh, my goodness. Keep talking. Keep talking. I'll, I'll put him. Hold on. No, 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 no. I, watch this. I have, look at this. Okay, I have let's a little see mouse Carl. Here. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do this. I'm going to literally, as we're Big talking. Carl. No, no, no. As we're talking. I'm gonna I'm gonna prove you wrong, and I'm gonna just for saying that. No, watch Carl this. slander. Leave Carl hold alone. On, hold on, <laughs> look at this with one hand. I'm so. Oops, hold on. I'm gonna do this with one hand just to prove to you that Carl's alive and well. Hold on. You think he's fake, huh? You want to call him fake? Hold on. You're putting it in my face. Hold on. Hold on. You want to make fun of Carl? You want to call Carl fake? Well, huh? I can't even see. I have to look over there. How do you oh like me now? Oh my gosh. How do you like me now, huh? A little fake, a little bird, fake bird there. <laughs> People are going to make fun, or they're going to be mad at you. So I know. Your wife. Why are you so mean? Let her talk. <laughs> you guys need to go cry somewhere else, please. She loves it. She's laughing. If she's laughing, it means she loves it. So, yeah, so Can, that's Do you have any Carl. other birds? Oh, now you're going to say my birds aren't enough. Carl, she doesn't mean it. Carl, close your ears. Close your ears. She didn't mean it. I'm going to make him peck your face right now. He's going to peck all your, peck your face right now. Hold on. All right, he's chilling. They one car. If you're not married, uh, you need Carl's to be. Carl's our son. If you're not married, Carl's you to, our son. You need to be one Carl length apart. For everyone that's not married, <laughs> one, <laughs> one Carl length apart. There he is. That's not bad. That's in good there. Okay. How do I approach sharing about the movie? Yeah, tell people, hey, there's a movie about casting out demons. You should go check it out. Is your sweater? I don't, where did you get it again? I got it in a boutique. I don't even. No, this dude is not my house. What kind of puppy do we have? We have a... a teacup Yorkie. Teacup Yorkie. I love this. I'm glad. See what I'm saying? You want to make fun of Carl? He'll show up when you least expect it. All right, Carl, go back to bed. You're acting crazy. Do you have any other birds besides a pigeon? I don't, I don't have like a zoo. I don't have like all these... <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not like a zookeeper. Like, you think I'm like, oh yeah, which one? I have an exotic falcon. I have a Guatemalan parrot. I mean, I just... Carl, it's all we have there. It's just, it's just Carl. We need more couple in marriage videos. You excited for the movie? Yes. Do you speak any other languages? We both speak in tongues and that's it. <laughs> I have a video on the abyss. Go check the channel. When you guys ask things like explain the abyss in the Bible, uh, I can't go into like a whole teaching on the abyss, but I have videos on the channel where I do go into teachings and I have scriptures and you can just search them. This is just like casual Q&A, ask us anything type of thing. Is vaping a sin? Well, sin means miss the mark, and I don't think you're hitting the mark God has for you if you're vaping. Let me ask you this. Could you witness to someone while blowing vape in their face? That's the question. Oh. One time there was someone in a car next to us. We were on the Bay Bridge or the, um, the Golden Gate Bridge. No, it was the Bay Bridge. And Alyssa's like, oh. She was like this. We had our windows down. It was summertime. And Alyssa was like, what are you gonna say this now? is a true story. She's like, oh, what is that smell? That smells so good. Oh, That's yeah. like... Cotton candy. A, I'm like, Alyssa, yeah, that's the car me. next yeah. to us vaping. <laughs> <It was. laughs> they were blowing their vape into our car and it was cotton candy. And Alyssa's like, it smells so good. What is that? I, I think was like, it was strawberry. I was like, it's the lady next to you vaping. Yeah. Don't vape. Vaping is bad. It kills you. <laughs> Literally. The movie will be out after it's out in theaters. I'm trying to figure out how we can get on our YouTube channel. Mwahaha. How could I get it? I don't know why evil laughed there. But yes. I'm trying to see. You like cheese its? I like the its, the special ones, which I think we have some here. Does God help with mental illness? Yes. Will you travel abroad to different countries to preach? Not yet, but possibly. Right now I'm busy here. But yeah, she was sniffing up the vape. She didn't know it was vape, but it was in the car next to us. She's like, is that cotton candy? And I was like, no, that's a vape. It's a long time that, ago. Vape is not good. Yeah, she wasn't doing it like she likes vape. It wasn't oh, like... Oh, no. It was like, that. what's that good smell? And I was like, oh, that's somebody vaping. They're trying to kill our whole family. What's your thoughts on Darman? I don't know who that is. Um, they want to know if they can buy the movie after. Yes, gonna... after the movie's out, it'll be out on DVD for all of oh, you okay. oldies but goodies. Is it Carl or Carl? I don't know. I think it's with the K. Well, um, Carl's with a C. Yes, vaping is dangerous. No, do not vape. Yes, it's a sin. Killing yourself with vaping is a sin for sure. I know other people are scared to say that. I'm not. Excuse me. 
Are you okay? Air in the lungs. You want water? No, no, no. I was just. My poor Jamba juice has been sitting here. Didn't even get drank. Well, at least you get yours. I couldn't bring my bit. Dr. Pepper. This. Guess what I'm drinking. That. I'm we need 30. some of that synthwave music. Did you I just say you're 40? I said I'm 30. Somebody asked how old I am. Hmm. You're 31. I'm 30. That's not good after sitting for two hours. Yeah, it looks disgusting. Just, Look at the bottom. Yeah, I just even... sucked up like a flake <laughs> that was sitting at the bottom. Shake Ugh. it up. <laughs> yeah, cheese it snapped. What's the best part of marriage? What's your favorite part about marriage? There's kids watching too. Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> No, I'm, be, I'm just saying. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. Don't be weird, guys. I was just going to say that you have like a companion. Oh. And you're like in a different... I thought you were going to say uh, being married to me was the best part of marriage. Well, yeah, obviously. How many Dr. Peppers have you drank today? Uh, oh. What? Oh. More than one? <laughs> Don't expose yourself on... You know, they ju these people ju I hear judge quick I on know. YouTube. I know. Everybody's so judgy. I did get a Sonic one. I had all the little tiny ice. He loves the little ice. Where drag queens don't belong, they don't belong. Uh, let's see. Do you have a secret stash of Funyuns at the studio? No. I told you guys a story. I loved Flaming Hot Funyuns, and I ate them before I got sick one day, and I threw up all yeah. night long because I was legitimately sick. I legit And left. it ruined my appetite for them. Yeah, I haven't ate them since. So, yeah. Dr. Pepper Cheese, it should sponsor you guys for real, though. Isaiah, yeah. uh, Alyssa, what was your first thoughts on Isaiah? She told that story last time, but I maybe did. you weren't here. But go ahead and tell us again. I was like, why is this guy screaming at me? She came to the revival um, before she was saved, and she just saw me screaming, Was like, and I was in the living room, and yeah, she was like, why is this guy screaming? Then she's like, look at those biceps. She's like, wow, I've never seen arms like that. She's like, he has arms like the almond tree outside. <laughs> <laughs> she, I think she said something like, I've seen better legs on the table. Oh I think that's the first gosh. thing you ever said to me. <laughs> Can you get deliverance at Life Song? Yes. Yeah, I think she was like, yeah, I've seen better legs on a table. I don't remember. Something like that. Stop. Favorite thing about each other? What's your favorite thing about me? Um, everything. I can't oh, pick one. I can't just pick one thing. What are you talking about? That was a joke about the biceps, by the way, guys, because I'm super skinny. I mean, that, come on now. Let's be honest. Can Christians enlist in the military? Yes. Can I get deliverance of life song? Yes. They want you to grow a beard. What were your first, first thoughts on Dr. Pepper? <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not in a relationship with Dr. Pepper. <laughs> What are you guys talking about? What? What? <laughs> what is your relationship with Dr. Pepper? I oh, wait, what are your it? first thoughts? Like, What's Isaiah's what best mean? attribute? They have a lot of questions for you. Keep asking her questions, please. I like putting her on the spot. Hold on, let me put her on camera. I like, I like just do so to do something. I like pretend I'm doing something. Are you, are you, are you, are you, what? these are too many things to think of? They said, oh, What's your favorite part I was about me? On. I already oh, you're oh. moving on? <laughs> what? I was trying to read. Um, no, Nico's not single. He's married. Yeah, Nico's married. Sorry, the laugh's taken. Sorry, the laugh is taken by the other laugh <laughs> like in the background. Like, I would background. love to hear that laugh every the day. The two laughs found each other. Yeah, the other laugh on our other <sighs> videos is his wife. Um, okay, my, my favorite thing about you? Yes. Um, I already said that last stream, how caring you are. They weren't here. Karen? Caring. Oh, they said how caring you are. I was like, I'm not <laughs> that caring. Caring. Oh, that's nice of you. Yeah. That's sweet. You're nice to Can everybody. Can you give us some examples, like one or two or three, maybe? Oh, my gosh. I'm just kidding. You're nice to everybody. You go out of your way to talk to everybody. Not, am I? I mean, you are hit, every time you turn the back and forth, <laughs> you're hitting a light. It's no big deal. It's just like, you know, it's a little triggering my toe, but it's no big deal. You said it's because I'm nice to everybody. Huh. You're sweet. I thought you said I'm caring. You're loving. You said I'm caring. Oh. What ethnicity are you, Alyssa? I am Danish and Italian. Well, you said that was some attitude. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I'm Danish and Italian. Don't ask again. No, Isaiah's not awkward. Never awkward. Well, I mean, I just like talking to people. Yeah. I, I really like love people. Like, he literally goes like, out I, of his way I literally, to talk sometimes to Sometimes I pray that someone would, like, break down so I could stop and help them. Because I love helping oh people. Oh, my gosh. I'm not kidding. I pray. He's I'm like, please kidding. let the person in front of me break down. The other day, oh, yeah. our, our door dashers. You shouldn't pray that somebody's going to break down just the other so you day, can talk to them. Okay, I'll, <laughs> let me tell the story. The other day, late this at is, night, just I'll, don't say anything about it. Let me just tell it. Okay, okay. I'm not trying to be rude, but let me just tell it. The comments, they're going to be mad at you for that. Okay, like, You're so mean. I feel like, like I have to treat you like a little child now because you guys <laughs> in the comments. So the other day, she I won't put you on blast, but she, I ordered, mean, 
Wait. It's okay. We uh, anyway. Uh, she ordered DoorDash. She was having a craving. Okay. We don't know. She might be pregnant. She might not be. We're no. not sure. We what don't is, know. No. Well, nobody knows. Only God can I know. I wanted Del Taco. Only God okay, knows. that's not a okay, craving. Hold on. Only God knows. She she got oh, to. My gosh. She ordered Del Taco, and the DoorDash called me like we broke down. We want us just to cancel the order, or do you want to come? I was like, well, do you have a ride home? Okay. Are you okay? So just. Hold on. So I went and I I went and tried to help them. I was no, like, I'll pick you up. Most normal people would say cancel the order. It's fine. But Isaiah literally was so excited. I was trying to get the room. witness. He's like, I'm gonna go pick up your DoorDash order. I'm gonna bring the thing. I'm gonna see if they need I help. I told them I'll, I'll give them, them a to ride home. Like, I told them I'll give them a ride home and I'll help them with their car and I'm like, whatever they need. But I got why there. Why are they you had a so coming. nice all the time? <laughs> she got mad that I was being nice. She's like, What if they try to rob you? I was like, I'll rob them back. Oh my. <laughs> I was like, I'm not afraid. I'm like, I'm pretty sure DoorDashers aren't here trying to rob people and setting it up. Should Isaiah grow a beard, Alyssa? We got it. Get your mic all situated. <laughs> I can't with Nico. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I was, I, I was being nice. I was a man of God. How am I going to be a Christian I know. and be like, I'm saying you stay That's on the what I'm saying. You're just so nice all the time. Wow, you're making me feel really good about myself. Oh, God. What um, was the question you were going to ask me? Your head's cut off a little bit now. We'll have to fix the thing. Well, if you, you put my up. camera on so here, just try to be I would a little be able bit of a sloucher. to see. Try to be a little bit of a sloucher. Well, slouch put my camera on them where I can just see. Be, remember I always tell you don't slouch? Don't, don't listen to me. Slouch. There you go. There um, you go. I know. I'm, I guess I'm friends with Jenny Weaver. I, I've met her in person one time. Yeah, they're friends, of yeah. course. What was the thing about? I, think there's, I don't know. I think, there was a question. I think somebody still want to know what else do you like about Isaiah? <laughs> I think that was another question. I think that was someone else that came in, different person. Oh, a different person. Somebody sent brother. How does Moses well. make his coffee? He brews it. Did Did you notice Hillary Clinton? Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton joined the chat. I think she joined the chat and then deleted all the comments. Get it? <laughs> Get it? No, somebody named Hillary Clinton. It, guys, you can make whatever name you want on YouTube. Yeah, she na she was named Hillary Clinton, but it's not really Hillary Clinton. Imagine if Hillary Clinton was literally in here. Was Why like, Dr. Pepper? I don't know. I just like it. I'm sorry, Isaiah Sus. What does that mean? I'm scared. More Jesus jokes, they want Isaiah. Jokes, Isaiah. I don't have any more. Come on. Dude, I people get too offended. People are oh. like, oh, how dare you say that about the Israelites? I'm like, what? You didn't even know them. <laughs> like you guys act like I'm like, you guys act like you know you act like you knew like Ham Shem and Japheth, like your friends. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on a prophet rebuking Christians for going to a Beyonce concert? I mean, if you're a Christian going to Beyonce concert, are you well, concert, are you really a Christian? No. Let's be honest. You're out there going to that demonic stuff. Come on now, let's be honest. Um, let me try to find some good ones while you. Everyone while you read the wants chat. Nico laughing on camera. Why didn't Noah ever go fishing? Oh, he already had fish in his boat. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was no fish in the ark, but we'll talk about that later. There wasn't fish. <laughs> There's no fish in the ark. We'll talk about that later. The whole world was water, honey, sweetheart, baby girl. He only had two worms. It's okay, guys. We're still working through some theology. We're still working through some theology with her. Let me put her on screen. My brother's dying. I should have took the, if I knew we were going to do jokes, I would have took the voice filter off, the noise gate off. He already had fish on the boat. Tears going down my face. There was no su sushi on the ark. I almost said sushi. You're right. The water was after. Why well, couldn't Noah? Oh my, wait, hang on. Noah. You gotta wait. I'm crying. <laughs> See, she's very easy to make laugh. You guys believe in evolution? No. Well, it depends. If you're talking about like adaptation or like we came from monkeys. Okay. This is it. <laughs> Do you both deliver people live? We've never done a deliverance together on live like that. Are you crying? Again? Because you know what? I just realized that the fish were in the water. <laughs> <laughs> the fish were definitely in the water. She just noticed the fish were in the water. Yeah, the fish were good. The fish didn't okay. have. They, didn't, they were good. They didn't need. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Uh, these aren't. None of these are funny. Oh, I should have swatted those two mosquitoes. None of these were. None of these are funny, to be honest with you. Okay. Where was Solomon's temple located? Oh, I don't know if I'm ready. Now your head's all cut off because you're sitting way up. It's okay. You're just cut off. We just basically see your forehead only. Okay. Where's Where is Solomon's temple located? I don't even know. On the side of his head. 
<laughs> <laughs> Get it? That was delayed. Okay. I had to think about it too much. The Moses Hebrews. We've already heard that. Let's see. Oh, God. None, of, none of these are funny, guys, to be honest. They said I look like Kim K when I laugh. What do you call pastors in Germany? We already did that one. German shepherds. <laughs> What Bible character is a locksmith? Uh, Zacchaeus. <laughs> Nico, I need to, Nico, switch your spots really fast. Nico, switch your spots. I think sitting over there, there's just something, there's a funny, we, we definitely need to get another camera for Nico. Hey Isaiah, first time catching live. Well, sorry that had to be right now. As your blessed wife, you just watched your mass deliverance. Uh. Casting his video was amazing. Thank you, hands of God. How many times you guys reckon yonder in a day? What is what? that? What is reckon yonder? What is a reckon yonder? Did I just say something I shouldn't have said? What is reckon yonder? Is that something sexual that I shouldn't have said? A Tennessee joke. What is reckon yonder, guys? I'm scared. Uh, what does reckon yonder mean? What kind of man was Boaz before he married Ruth? Ruthless. Oh man. I don't know what reckon yonder means. Please, someone tell me in the chat. I'm scared. No, there's no baby Not number five. Not wrecking yonder. I mean, soon. When's Alyssa writing a book? We don't know. She might be pregnant. No, I Thoughts on Jeff Durbin? I don't, I don't know. I don't know Jeff this. Durbin. <laughs> he just keeps saying it. Isaiah, Miami needs revival. I know. We made this look like Miami. I'm still trying Miami to go to colors, Miami, Miami colors. <laughs> Isaiah, oh that God. sweater's low-key saucy, though. Thank you. I'm glad. Is it ranch or what? Um, him okay. and Z are cousins. Do you want me to grow out a beard now that everyone's here? They're asking if you and Z are in contact a lot. Yes, me and Z are cousins. Yes, we talk about cousins. We're blood cousins. Have you tried African food? No, I haven't. Alyssa, do you want me to grow out a beard? Not long. So you, so she actually doesn't like when I'm freshly shaven. She likes me to have like a little bit of hair on my face. Like a couple days. What are your love languages? Hers. Yours are words of affirmation for sure. Why do you say that? Yes, it is. What do you think yours is? Physical touch? No, it's know. not. Oh, I don't know. I don't really know the love language is very good. I mean, I actually don't know any of them. <laughs> I think yours are, I think you're all of them. Oh my gosh. I think, you're, I think you have all the love languages. <laughs> no, it's, um, it's physical touch and gifts. Isaiah, is your shirt a, a physical touch and gifts? Yeah. Is your shirt a secret gender reveal? No, unfortunately. Oh, no. What, a fifth girl? Isaiah keeps saying, what do you like about me? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You have a picture of Isaiah with a beard? No. Please, I've never more seen jokes him. next stream. I'll come up with some funny ones. Yes, yes, yes. Baby number five. We're going to have another baby probably in the next few weeks. <laughs> How old do you have to be to be on the deliverance map? We, pr we, we recommend over 18. But if you're, it's special circumstances, families together, there's circumstances. Dr. Pepper's bad for your internal organs? Yes. Yeah, we know. Soda's bad Thank for you. you don't, for that. don't drink soda. We would I had no idea. We would never drink soda. It's absolutely terrible. We know it is bad. We don't drink it often. <laughs> really, though, I grew up drinking no soda. Like, I, I don't drink soda hardly at all. I'll but I don't. Like, I don't drink soda. I'm every saying, day. are we talking about bad habits? Because no, no, no. I mean, we're not trying to expose each other I'm here, like... Alyssa. Just <laughs> relax, relax. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about ordering DoorDash four times a day. What? Um, the subtle shove. I was just going to say the energy okay, drinks. Okay, okay, okay. Calm down. Calm down. <gasps> I'll, I'll drink energy here and there, but, you know, I'm no, I'm no <laughs> addict. What is the teaching? What is God teaching you in this season? Oh, is that for me? Yes. I thought you were answering. I'm just trying to read uh, oh. questions. There's a lot of them. God is teaching me. The right, drink I, plus I, Dr. I'm Pepper. We're just kidding. <laughs> we're just kidding. Um, to do things that are very uncomfortable and to like this. like this and to never say no when God could be doing something that I'm unaware of. Good. Why well, is soda bad for you? Because it has pretty much every ingredient in it. There's nothing good about it. Board only for the chosen. Beard. Beard. Oh, beard for the chosen. Oh yeah. I would grow out a beard if I got into the chosen, but I don't have time to do that. I, I, and I plus, you know what I mean? Someone says, stop teasing her. How See, am I teasing her? See, they don't like when you're you're mean to you guys me. Are so, you guys are so protective. She loves it. I need to get baptized. We baptize at every service. You can come get baptized at ours. What's the age gap? I'm 10 years older than her. So, you know, we got to raise them out here. What's the podcast name? Revival Lifestyle Podcast. I'm kidding. I'm one year older than her. One. One year. 
I'm 31. Uh, everybody's she's 30. very upset about soda right now. Yeah. I Do know. they want me to go get That's my soda saying. and drink it That's on what the street? Hey, hey, don't be, don't be too crazy. You guys listen to Christian rap? Yes. You sh I'm telling y'all, when you get these white girls flared up over here, they don't play. She'll, she'll go off to this on somebody. He's prophesying. It was like the math doesn't add up. I'm kidding. I'm one year older than her. Teasing is Isaiah's love language. She loves it. She's not as soft as some of you guys out here. Bring on the, out the calculator again. Did we bring out a calculator? No, I think this is your chance to ask her. We're almost done. We're going to go like, they're like I'm drinking a couple a more right minutes. Now. We don't do stuff in the studio super often, so we, they are long when we're here, but who's complaining? Are uh, you ready for the Chosen Four? Yes. I wish it was out. Where'd you get your sweatshirt for the 90th time? I don't know. It, it was, uh, you want me to check my Probably link? Etsy. <laughs> Etsy? Probably Etsy. Oh. Yeah, probably. Thoughts on Billy Graham? I don't have any particular thoughts. I think he did preach good. good no, job. I'm not taller. I'm no, way shorter. No, she's not shorter. taller. She's way shorter. She's up to my shoulder. Is it really? I'm not 6'1". I never claimed to be 6'1". I'm a 5'11 and 3 fourths. Am I really six foot? Didn't I you think so. You literally measured me. I mean, I think so. I don't remember You that. measured I me. I don't remember that. I may remember I was like, you need to measure me because the stream keeps asking. They mm -hmm. won't stop. I have to be honest. Well, then, yeah, I did. I'm 5'11 with no shoes. Let's be honest. I'm 5'11 with shoes. I'm six foot. Let's, let's just be honest. What's the first thing you're going to ask Jesus when you see him in person? I don't know. I'll probably uh, just hug him. Yeah, probably just give him a good old church hug. Probably say, like, was I one of your favorite disciples? They want to know if you're going to do more vlogs. Uh, yes, yeah, so we're going to be actually, I'm glad you asked. We're going to be vlogging the red carpet premiere of the Come Out in Jesus Name movie. They don't know about that. Well, there's a premiere. Well, I'm telling them now. Oh. There's a red carpet premiere, but you guys can't go, but we're going. <laughs> Tough for y'all. But it's a red carpet. It's for those that are like in it and people like that. And then we're going to be vlogging it. So you'll see that. Advice for future stay at home moms. Oh, it's oh. getting deep now. Never sacrifice God because of the kids. Good. Don't sacrifice God. Yeah, and you're just going to have to make time even when it doesn't look perfect at all. And also, don't be too hard on yourself because God knows the seed. That's good. You got anything else in the tank? That was good. I have a lot. That was I've good. lived it out. <laughs> What Christian artist do you listen to? I can't name them all right now, but I'll make a playlist. As Z Spiritual Sniper Song Isaiah has the part in the song. Yes. Hold on, I'm gonna do something. Just don't get mad at me. I'm not bullying her at all or anything like that. Just stay put. Stay right there. Keep reading comments. What are you keep, doing? Just are you leaving reading. me? No, just keep reading comments. Are you just, fixing my mic? Back. Don't worry. That doesn't hold look on, any on. better. That's no big deal. We got you. We got you. Somebody said that we should do a podcast with um, Mike and Julie. Yeah, that would be awesome. The I reason, totally guys, why we're different levels is because I'm a lot taller. So to keep me in frame and her in frame is much different. So, yeah, if you're wondering why, that's the case. But you're probably not wondering because you're probably not a nerd like me. I'm probably the only one. Mm -hmm. it. True. Do people call you guys legalists? Uh, lukewarm people do sometimes, but not often. You, like, you see what I did there? I have a 37-year-old, so you two can be my children. We definitely can. I think we should probably get off here and get something to eat. I'd tell someone they're not a mistake. Uh, I don't know. I would just tell them you're not a mistake. I said, don't chosen. leave her. Are you leaving me? <laughs> oh, she thought I was going to get up and leave. Oh. I'm, I'm just glad that I let you talk tonight because I always hog the mic. Do you know Amen Alex? I don't. I've only talked to him before. I think like comments or something. No, stay. I know it's Valentine's Day. Y'all should probably go have some alone time. You guys, not us, you guys. You know what I mean? Go do that, whatever stuff. Go eat dinner together. Both of your favorite foods. Spaghetti. <laughs> How do I get baptized at your church? Just show up and say you want to get baptized. What do you think is your You're favorite food? You're from my food? stream. I think it changes. I don't like food at all. I wish I could never eat again. He goes through, fa we all know this, he goes through phases. So he likes one certain thing for... Anywhere from like four to nine days. And then after that, he'll never eat it again. Scared. And then he moves on. So he doesn't have like a favorite food. Too. It's terrible, yeah. What do you think if you could say one? I, I literally have burned myself on everything. Alfredo? No, not at all. Maybe when I was like four. Not anymore. No. No. But that's I don't, what you, I don't, what I don't even get. need it anymore. No, I don't even need it anymore. 
If I go Chinese to like a really food? nice restaurant, I'll get it, but not. I don't. I don't eat it anymore. I burn myself out. I, yeah, that place at BJ's is really good. Been learning to cook. I'll hook you up. I would love. Uh, I don't know. I, I would like to learn to cook for one day, and that's it. <laughs> and then never cook again. Um. What way does God communicate with you? Um. Same question for your wife. Um. Probably a still small voice, or yeah. like a piece about something, or an inward overwhelming yeah. feeling. That's probably the way God speaks to me the most. I would say the same. I, I, I would probably say the Bible, but that I can't. If I can't use that, then yeah. That's probably the most. I would say the same. It's a lot like when I'm in the car or just doing stuff. Who's the I, I an- feel something. Who's the Antichrist? Uh, Walt Disney. Do you Where's mis- your church stocks in California? Do you miss steak and shake? Yes, I could feel it in my bones right now. My bones are tingling thinking about it. <laughs> I'm literally so hungry for it. I hey, can cry. Hey, we're going cry back to Nashville. To yeah, we're going to be in Nashville. And I'll, you know, I'll, trust me, I'll eat it three times a day, and I'll probably take some home in my suitcase. We're going to take Nico and Stevie to... So good. Steak and shake. So good. Thank you, Lord, for making steak and shake. You know who Jabin Chavez is? I haven't heard the name in a long time. I haven't kept up with him. I, I knew who he was. Well, I know of him. I know who he is, I guess, but I haven't like seen his stuff in probably like six or seven years. They want me to talk about motherhood. What do you guys want to know? It's wild. Best place to look for a future spouse? Church. I love hearing the laughing in the background. Yeah, that's everyone's favorite part. What kind of man was Isaiah before marrying Alyssa? Answer, a, a list, a man. A list, a man? Alyssa man? A list, a man? What does that mean? I'm scared. I don't know. I don't know what that means. They want you to do push-ups. Are you really pressuring me to do this? I don't think I could do more than like 10. I'm they scared. said, how many can you do in a minute? Are you guys serious? Don't even put me into peer pressure. You know, I, I'll give he in. He loves peer pressure. No, I don't. Hold on, I'm going to do 10. Just kidding. Okay, we love you guys. We're going to be live on Friday night with Greg Laurie. Not me. For the Jesus Revolution. If you guys give, please give, donate. The link's to give are down below. We need your monthly support. We need your help. Thank you. We can't do this without you. This is all free, as you guys know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. <laughs> I know it was a little bit different, the reaction. If you guys liked... Sorry. Don't don't lie, okay? Don't lie. Be honest out here. If you like the reaction live stream, we've never done one of these before. Type one in the chat. If you're like, do another reaction live stream like this, hang out, talk, chill. Yeah, do you guys like this or like, like some of the comments were, get stay in your lane, Isaiah. Go back to deliverance. Like preaching? Yeah. I literally have 1,200 videos. Well, that's of me what I'm preaching. saying. Yeah, I'll still do deliverance. Why would I not do deliverance? I do oh, deliverance. Oh, see, all everybody the time. likes this. Yes. The thing is, okay, here's the crazy part to me. Let me just rant since you guys wanted. Go ahead. I was going to get off, but now, Go ahead. The now, floor's, now while we're here. The floor's yours. While we're here. <laughs> we love a good rant. I literally <laughs> post. I have posted three shorts a day for uh-huh. the, this is not, now they're going to say I'm in Illuminati. I didn't mean to do the, you know, this ain't oh, no, okay. Geez. Anyways, all the hair sanders are going to take this. I have posted three short videos a day. I have. It means that you were less than, a, less of a man. Oh, They answered less, the joke. Okay, for, okay. I ahead. have posted three video, short videos a day. I have 12, almost 1,200 videos on my channel. I have hundreds of hours of preaching. I do verse by verse. I have every ser- million sermons you can listen to. You couldn't even listen to all my content. I have 1,000 hours. I post one video of us telling a clean joke to my wife or us having fun about fast food. And people are like, brother, oh my goodness. brother, you need to go back to preaching. Are you ever going to teach the Bible again? I'm like, dude, oh, I literally was- taught verse by verse yesterday. <laughs> I post so many preachings. I'm preaching four times this Sunday. Yeah. I'm doing an interview on People Friday. People got so mad about the fast food. How dare you talk about fast food? You're supposed to be a preacher. I'm like, what are you even talking about? Like, it let me like, just have fun with my wife. Are you serious? Like, I don't understand. They were so offended by fast food. I make, I, I literally do two to three hour streams multiple times a week. So anyways, that's my rant for you guys. If you want to listen to preaching, you don't like this content, then there's so, the thing is, this content is not replacing any preaching. Like at all. I was not going to have a live stream till Friday, but here we are. So praise the Lord on Valentine's Day night. So just, just don't complain. Be like, oh, he has thousands of preaching videos. Tonight, we literally talked about all godly content. Yeah. They, we talked for two hours about God, revival, and uh, I don't understand. It's like, how can I please everybody? So anyways, I'll keep screaming, repent, and preaching. Of course, I'll never yeah. stop doing that. I'll keep teaching through the Bible verse by verse. I'll keep teaching on deliverance. I have 70 deliverance videos. I have 60 hours of deliverance. We have a deliverance network and deliverance map. Go I'll on. keep doing Zoom. Go de- you want to keep going? <laughs> I'll keep doing Zoom deliverances. We have a partner's call coming up. I forgot to announce. I'll announce on Friday. So just take people, a deep breath, relax, and go watch my other content if you don't like this content. People want to know if I do deliverances. Yes, she does. 
Your program keeps cutting out. That's because you're watching on Facebook and Facebook hates. I've been doing them for high years. quality streams. So go watch on YouTube. Facebook just gives us problems when we stream with this at the studio because we're streaming at a high, at a very high quality. So I, I don't I don't I don't have to tell you guys. Switch over to YouTube. So yes, we're running the race. We're pushing hard. We're still saved. And being honest <laughs> with you guys, like I'm gonna make more deliverance videos, but I've made I've made a video on every delivered topic I could think of, and I've done it two to three times. So it's like I have the videos. I have 70. Like, how could I, you know what I'm saying? Like, you want me to make a deliverance video every single week? There's only so much to teach on deliverance. And I have mm -hmm. video after video. And same thing with like all the other stuff. So yeah, that's where that's at. It does get annoying though when you guys comment. I've actually never been annoyed with comments until people are like, oh, brother, I only like your preaching videos. Then don't watch these videos. It's like super simple. Like we enjoy making these. This is a new studio, a new well, type of content. I think people also consider God to be like one thing. And it's like, you can still have God in your everyday life. And not like, only yeah, that, yeah, you do preaching and stuff, but we're still humans. And there's we still stuff I can't share, but let's just say multiple family friends. I can share with you, but not with the chat. Not oh, with the I'm like, like where are we going here? I can't share it live. <laughs> there are things I can't say on the live, but let's just say there's multiple family friends that are watching right now, friends and family members that would never go to church that are not Christian yeah, that okay. watch these yeah. videos that won't watch my preaching. And this is a way to reach them with the gospel as well and get them in the other stuff. I literally have multiple people this week that said, I started yeah. watching you and your wife's podcast, couldn't stop watching it. Now I'm watching yeah. all your other preaching. And these people would never watch preaching or never go to church. Well, and I think so, we also do this because it makes us relatable. It makes us like normal humans. We have a normal life and we just incorporate God into everything we do. Yes. You know what I mean? Like everyone just sees you preaching all this stuff and then we do this and it's like, oh, he's actually a human and he actually has kids and we actually go to fast food and drink Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yes. So you guys will survive. God is still moving. We're still in revival. We're doing it multiple times a week. We're still doing deliverances. We're doing this, con any of this content will be extra content and we're not, yeah. I don't know, I don't even know why we're ranting and apologizing. We I literally know. have no one to apologize to. <laughs> Everybody's still here. It's 2000 of you. You're here because you like this content. You're turning into me and comments are starting to get to you a little bit. I don't know, yeah, but it's just, it's I think just, getting soft. I know it's because I've been reading comments. I usually never read comments. And some people like Linda four, four, three line of the tribe of Judah at <laughs> facebook.com has been like just saying some crazy stuff. And I'm like, listen, <laughs> like just take a deep breath. Yeah. One lady. Okay. Let me give you an example and then we'll, we'll, we'll move All on. All right. Keep we'll, it going. We'll end it. Okay. I posted a video of us talking about, I don't know what it was. We had like a fast food clip with short. Yeah. This is a Facebook top fan of mine. So like, that means she's commented yeah. thousands of times. She has the badge. Yeah. I'm like, she's out here with the badge. I know exactly what you're she talking about. She literally commented and said this. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> what are you morons laughing at? Yeah. You think this is a joke? She said that, you morons. And who's yeah. that moron in the back laughing? You yeah. think this is a big joke? She even How went dare Nico. you laugh? I'm like, what? I even said, like, I think you have the wrong page. Like, I You're said, like, like, how are you a top fan? That's what I said. I said, how did yeah. you get a top fan badge and why are you so angry? But it's like, what are you saying? I'm like, I'm an idiot for laughing with my wife about, like, I don't even I remember know. what it was. It was one of the clips. Maybe it was the Jesus breaks every chain. But I'm like, dude, you need to take a deep breath and take that badge off because you're making me look bad out here. But yeah, Anyways, those type of comments are crazy. We love the positive people, though. Yeah, it's crazy. I love you guys. Yeah. We're going to go celebrate Valentine's Day by eating something somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> But I'm going to do stream ending here. Let me test it out here. Here we go. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. Love you guys. We'll see you soon. Look at that. It worked. The wide angle. We actually keep forgetting. We always forget to put on the wide angle because it just, the close-up looks so much better. The close-up looks so much better. You got the combat boots on. Girl, you're ready for war. Uh, they can still hear us stuff. Yeah, yeah. No, we're still live. We're still alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, don't flirt with me too hard here. <laughs> Uh, shrimp. I gotta stretch out my legs. We'll just let it. We'll just let it simmer here at the stream ending. The wide angle is cool. We do need. We, we. I think we just forget about it. I think we forget about it. The other angles. I know. Me and Nico are, but you know, we'll blame him after. <laughs> it's not just me. Nico's also forgetting about it too. Love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for staying and hanging out. You guys are awesome. Your fit is a ten out of ten. Revivalist Jonna says. Everybody loves the wide angle. Oh, oh yeah, I do got Carl. Wait, wait, where's he at? My button's not working. Hold on. Oh, it's only for beginning. Okay, hold on. We'll put him on. Glad you ba -ba -ba. There he is. The man himself, the legend. 
I love when new people click in at this screen and they're like, what did I jump into? They're like, what am I watching? We're gonna be in Nashville. Well, you got, you guys can't go. So. We're gonna be there in the beginning of March. Yeah, it's not open to the public. I have a studio tour video coming out hopefully next week, or hopefully this weekend. We're gonna work. We're working on it. Okay, just we're working on it. We just got a new computer, so I'm just. Is this my favorite YouTuber? Thank you. Okay. 